Hey all, and welcome back to the Uncharted X podcast. My name is Ben, and this is episode eight of the show. In this one, this is another video podcast that I've done with the Snake Brothers, and I'm also joined by my, by my good friend, Matt Simpson, from the Ancient Architects YouTube channel. Uh, he's a great guy, puts out lots of great content. Go and check his channel out. If you haven't already seen it, I imagine most of you probably know about Matt's channel. Uh, we're taking a bit of a pivot away from Egypt in this episode. We're going to take a closer look at Saxe Huaman in Peru and also the architecture that is in some of the streets of Cusco because I think they're tightly connected. In fact, I think Saxe Huaman once flowed down the hill all the way into Cusco. It is located kind of in the, the mountains around Cusco. Uh, as always, there is a video companion to this podcast that will help it to make sense. It's on my YouTube channel. You can also find it on the website, unchartedx.com. I do want to say that I do have some podcast exclusives coming up. I've recorded a bunch of interviews with several people uh, that are not video podcasts, they're audio podcasts. They'll probably fit a lot better into this medium. And some of those are only going to be available on this podcast. So if you're subscribed, please stay that way. You'll get access to some information that isn't going to be on my YouTube channel. I did want to say a big thank you to everybody that is listening to this podcast in this format. I've noticed a few reviews come in and a few ratings come in on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you very much for the people that are doing that. I really have no idea about metrics or, I mean, how many people are listening to this. Uh, I do intend to keep doing this. As I said, there'll be some exclusive content coming out on the podcast. And I also wanted to say that if anybody is interested in supporting my work, supporting the show, supporting the channel, uh, all of the details to do that are listed on my website. It's unchartedx.com slash support. I try to use the value for value model. It's a great model. It's something that I've shamelessly stolen from the uh, the No Agenda show, which is just an excellent podcast that I would highly recommend to everybody out there. But without any further ado and talking about that, I hope you enjoy this latest interview and there'll be plenty more to come. Cheers. And we are joined again. This is our third uh, Uncharted X, Brothers of the Serpent, Swapcast, and we are joined also by Matt from the Ancient Architects channel. Matt, thanks for joining us on this one, man. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to having your input. So we were talking before uh, before we started recording, and you were telling us about you you, you have a master's in geology. <clears throat> Is that right? That's going to help? Yeah, I mean, when I was an well, undergraduate, I did a degree in geology. Then I did a, a master's degree where I I actually worked on the um, mission to Mars, Beagle 2 mission to Mars led by Britain, uh -huh. which actually crashed on Christmas Day 2004, I think. Um, so it didn't actually succeed, but it was a great experience to work at the National Space Centre and test rock samples in the labs and all that sort of stuff. And it's given me a good sort of broad background, you know, broad level of information. So it helps me with all this study of ancient history and ancient ancient architecture and you know rock types structures yeah. is it possible what's not possible it's, it really helps me with the work that i do i'll bet excellent wow so you're a geologist and a rocket scientist <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> and, a, and a youtuber <laughs> and a, YouTube. yeah. and a wow. youtuber now yeah yeah <laughs> a renaissance man <laughs> yeah a bit of everything it's awesome. so since the geology degree i didn't actually use it for about eight years but you know <laughs> yeah. yeah but you, you know, it's like riding a bike right it, it comes back because you're looking at stuff yeah i've still got all the books right. <laughs> never read them at university but still <laughs> all the books well yeah, ben it, it, yeah go ahead good to have you back on too man we're with uh i think this series has been a lot of fun so today what are we looking at yeah we thanks it is good. Well, I thought we'd pivot a little bit away from it. We've done a couple at Egypt, and there's plenty more sites to look at in Egypt. Um, but today, uh, I thought we'd pivot a bit to South America, and, and I wanted to, I think, Saxe Huaman's probably a good place to start. But also, we'll, we'll start there, but then also sort of flow down the hill a little bit and look at Cusco, because there's some really interesting architecture in the streets of Cusco. Some of the, the, the megalithic stuff's there. Cusco is just a fascinating town with a bunch of different styles of um of architecture from different periods and it was all connected to Saxe Huaman. So it, it's kind of like this, the Cusco area, if you like, we'll, 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 we'll start up the top and then go down. And I think there's, there's, uh, there's quite a bit to look at in and around this place. It's, everyone's sort of seen the zigzag wall at Saxe Huaman. Um, yeah. but there's a lot more to that site. It's a, it's a big site. And then there's, you know, there's obviously been a lot of changes to it over the years, ever since the Spanish came through there, we will get into that stuff, but then, there's a lot of evidence of how far that actually did once run down the hill into Cusco itself, uh, which I think was originally kind of a megalithic city uh, that, that I think pretty obviously predated the Inca. And again, 
we'll see a lot of examples of the different styles of work here. There's um, one of the first videos I made on the channel was was a video called, I think, that it was something about the different, the, the Andean architecture styles. It's a sort of a primer on the, and it's clearer here than in a lot of other places. You, there's these obvious gaps in, in style and types of architecture. There's, to me, three clear styles uh, of architecture, which we'll get into, but that video kind of sets up, you know, the background for where these styles came from and, and kind of how they're ordered because they're always typically in a pretty consistent order. But the most the most contrasting thing we'll see on all of this is the megalithic work and then typically really rough, small, primitive work that's been used to repair that stuff and sits on top of it. There's this huge gap between the megalithic work and then what I would attribute as as Inca work. But you know, we can we can get into that stuff as we go. But uh, yeah, one of my favorite sites. It's, Definitely, if I think Peru's starting to open up again, it's so highly recommended. For, I think for anyone that's interested in this, go to these places. And Cusco is just a magic, the whole Sacred Valley, really a magic place to uh, to see a lot of these things. And how many and, how many times have you been there? Um, oh, I think three or four now. Um, yeah. But I that's I, I I have also spent a fair bit of time there. I was there for a month um, ah. in one of those trips. I've done tours there. This was the the Really, the first trip I had was 20, 2013 down there, and that was with Graham Hancock, as a story I've told a bunch of times. But that was what kind of the the, the, the genesis for getting me really deep into this and, and putting me on the path that kind of led to now, uh, where we're sitting here today talking about it. But that was 2013, and I went with, to Egypt with him a couple of years later again. But, but really, that first trip, he was researching... Uh, Magicians of the Gods, which was the follow-up to Fingerprints. So he's obviously Hancock's work. Fingerprints was the the real famous seminal work from 95. He went and did a lot of other um, topics at consciousness and the under underworld and a whole did, looked at a lot of other factors and even started writing fiction, I think, at that point. But, yeah. you know, once once he started to research Fingerprints, it was roughly only a few years after kind of the first research for The Younger Dry started to come out because... It's an interesting story because back in Fingerprints Day, you know, he was speculating that there must have been a cataclysm just looking at all the evidence, but there wasn't a real coherent theory or nothing as strong as the Younger Dryas cosmic impact theory is today. You know, there was earth crust displacement, a few other things floating around that he just was speculating that that this might be something happened. And then it wasn't until, you know, he, after the, 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 the Younger Dryas cosmic impact theory really started to gain traction and had a lot of support, a lot of scientific work behind it, that's when... Hancock started to research it's time to revisit you know fin fingerprints of the gods and that was ultimately magicians of the gods and this was one of his research trips um I think he, he even in that book tells a couple of the stories from that happened while we were on this trip so um yeah and it was just eye-opening but we can get into it and I just also wanted to say that Matt yeah I'm, gl I'm glad that we're chatting Matt and I speak a lot we've we've talked a bunch <laughs> And uh, we've been threatening to get together and do a podcast or do a recording for quite a while. So it's good. To many, many you. months. It's yeah. usually me saying no, because I don't usually do these. It's my first ever podcast. So yeah. um, go easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. This is, this is pretty, oh, yeah. pretty it's, casual. It's easy and fun. Yeah. So I'll get this. Uh, let me get this started. I will mute the audio. There's not a lot of audio in this one. We do actually, one of the things towards the end, we'll get a, a part of an interview I did with Brian Forrester uh down here that, that we'll get to towards the end but let's start just rolling with Saxe Huaman uh which sits up at the top of of Cusco and you guys can see this okay yeah yeah, yeah. great god god the size of those cornerstones they're just yeah. huge aren't they enormous it's yeah and there's you'll see lots of these too like this I'll just pause it real quick this is the type of thing you see a lot of symbolism that comes back it gets attributed to the Inca you can kind of see a paw print almost here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you'll see this in a few different places. And I I, I have a, a couple of videos about Saxe Huaman and, and certainly get into some of that symbology. I think it's, I personally think it's something like finding shapes in the clouds. Like if you are looking for a symbol, you're looking for a shape, you're bound to find it. We, we as humans are great at pattern recognition. Um, it's because there's supposedly serpents and pumas and all that stuff. I wonder if there's any paint on it ever, like any remnants of paint where they could have, you know, actually made them come to life. Even if they just saw them, even if they were, you know, they're not on purpose. They might have just saw the shapes themselves and, and painted them to look iconic. I don't know. 
possibly. I, I, I don't know of any paint on <clears throat> this, but definitely like the the um the Spanish it's quite a colourful actually... culture, isn't it? The Inca, for example, are quite colourful. Their clothing, the textiles, Absolutely. and the pottery as well. There's a, there was yeah, definitely. And and I mean Brian even thinks that some of that stuff uh could have been some of their patterns in their embroidery could have been almost a, a written language. There's another one there. This is another mm. quarter they'd call that a paw print. But some of the this is uh, yeah. This is this is kind of up at the, the some of the big stones, and we'll get we'll we'll go like a full tour down the zigzag wall, plus up on the other the other layers above it, then right up on top of the hill, and then back over behind us. But yeah, I mean, so some... I, have, I have a question real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. I've wondered this: like, what's are we looking at the bottom of the wall, and what are they sitting on? Hmm. I mean, is there a foundation? Is there foundation stones below the ground? Did they carve it into the bedrock? It's a good question. Uh, this is we don't really know. I, I I suspect they go down further, and we don't really know if this is the <clears> ground <throat> level because you do have a lot of accounts, um, particularly after the Spanish arrived. You 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 had the similar situation in Egypt where there was, it was it, at one point I think one of the the accounts describes it was the work of all of the town to be digging here. Like the people were digging and excavating and changing everything. So even this layer that we look at today and we walk on, I think I think that's still that may not be the same layer that it was in the past. You actually in in some places where we'll get up to, you'll see big stones underneath these stones as well. So it's yeah. it's I possible. I saw that on uh, like a, a little bit earlier on the other video that there there were a few you could see them sitting on something. Yeah. I just couldn't yeah. tell if it was bedrock outcrops or if it was stones that went further down. I don't know. I mean there's I think it was first excavated or fully excavated in 1944. I think it was right. a guy called John Howland Rowe who excavated the site quite extensively and as one of those uh, Puma Paws again. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to get hold of that report that he wrote to find out exactly, you know, his eyewitness accounts from the excavations because that seems to have gone from everywhere. You can't, I can't seem to find that anywhere. I think written such a long time ago, probably buried in a, university library yeah yeah and that's and that's probably something worth mentioning about this whole site is is that in and in general in south america you just there's very little there's way less information about this stuff than than you would typically find say for egypt for example you've got mm. you know obviously no written records from the inca and previous civilizations uh, anything that was was more or less destroyed you know you've got a few accounts from from the the conquistadors and some of the priests and the 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 you know as they mixed with the local culture here and they, you know I, I think Clarence Markham and there's a few other people that that have got some accounts written down Gasalasa de la Vega, but very little information in general uh, about this stuff and it's it's one of those things like the Inca don't really ever claim to have built these things even though we attribute it to them, uh, it's pretty clear as we go around that you know there was there's a lot more going on. Um, yeah than just the Inca so work. These, is this limestone, and uh, do they know where the quarry is? It is limestone, I believe. The quarry is... I have I have heard conflicting reports on it. Uh, uh, Brian tells me that the quarry is within... Um, it's like 15 kilometers away. There, there's quite a distance, uh, the quarry. And what's impressive about that is, I mean, this is... You're talking about the Andes mountain range here, right? This is 11,500 feet at Cusco. Uh, you're yeah, way up on the, a... in the steep mountains, up in high altitude. Not and, an easy terrain, <laughs> right? And and it's it's almost a distinction between. This is a good example. If your top left corner here, you and you probably see a lot of this as well. Also in these gaps here, this is one of the big tellers, I think, with the megalithic work. I mean, we could talk about the scoops and everything else with it, but in general, the stone, it's basalt or it's limestone or it's something. The, the megalithic work tends to all be of, of the same, whatever installation it is, it's of the same stone type. That seemed to be really important. And in most cases, that stone has come from a significant distance. I know there's some granite work in the city in Cusco. The, 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 the quarry's like 30 kilometers away. So they've hauled this stone a long distance over the mountains. And, and that's juxtaposed with the small repair work that you see on and around this stuff, always on top of it, which means it came later. That is typically andesite, and it's local stone. It's it's the stuff that they yeah. they find right in this area. It's rougher work. It's smaller work. And I think it's the Inca, that's that's the sign of the Inca. The Inca found this. They found Cusco. They found these sites when they when they, when that empire emerged, and they came down out of the highlands into. They followed the river, and they found Cusco. I think it was probably an abandoned megalithic city. 
they found it profound. They respected it. They rebuilt it. They repaired it. They used the stone that was laying around. You see, when we get down in the city, there's tremendous examples of where they would reuse megalithic stone in their in their buildings, in their works. Quite commonly, you'd see lintels, stones above doorways. That's like you know a big basalt stone that's shoved in somewhere, and the rest of the walls just andesites. Like they they would reuse the stuff that was laying around. They'd repair what they could, but in general, it's kind of I think they found it profound and they respected it, and that became a big part of their culture. Might is that another flaw the, there on the upper left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the age of these stones will be. You can get an idea from the rock type once we know the exact rock type. So if I was up close there now and analyzing what rocks they are. Because we can see the, the scoop marks in them, because we can still see, you know, worked surfaces, if it's limestone, it might not be that old because we can still see these tool marks. But if it's granite or if it's a harder stone, then it could be or any age really. So yeah. I think sort of a geological analysis of the rock type right. might be the one thing that can help us date it roughly, yeah. whether it's... 2,000, 1,000, 10,000, 5,000 yeah. years old. Yeah. It's that sort of scientific work that needs doing on the site, a full geological analysis of the rocks. But yeah. even then, they could have been reworked. We don't know. Yeah. You'd also have to take into account the, uh, you know, the, the climate history of the area and whether or not it was buried too, right? Well, that's the, yeah. Obviously, the soil does move. I mean, and I was reading a paper quite recently saying that the people who built these sites built different walls for different purposes. So these walls they were saying might be so massive because they were trying to hold back as much soil as possible to big stop it moving. Big retaining walls. So it needed to be stronger than in Cusco, for example. I don't know if that's correct or not, but it's somebody's theory is they were trying to hold back all this soil from creeping down the hill. So they built these giant walls <laughs> around it. Maybe. Again, it's, it's, Maybe. it's a theory, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. This so this is just to explain this bit of footage is so we started off that was at, at we'll come back to that the 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 other end which is I guess the left side looking at the zigzag wall. This is far down the right hand side at the other end of the zigzag wall, mm. and I like this footage because you can see a similar thing like that where it's almost it's not really serving as a retaining wall here. You've got you, you've you've got like mm. the soil on top of the wall, and I think this is maybe an indication could be an indication of age. It's either where it's been excavated or carved or cleared. But all that dirt, and you can see all the pieces from these walls have been removed. A lot of this has been quarried. I think these walls were generally quite a bit taller. But there are like a yeah. number of courses of this wall <clears throat> as it goes up the hill. It is almost like a series of like a walled garden. You know, it creates those flat spaces. Yeah, um, it's terraces or something. It is terracing. That's right. Yeah, terraces. I'm surprised those terraces really haven't crumbled, but the stones have removed. You yeah, think they would have crumbled, and you know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The other thing that 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 is, uh, we'll get a better look at this as we go around there. So, some of these walls, like where they where the the ground level is lower behind them, they would create these walls, and then it looks like they would the Inca at least would be would backfill the walls with material. And what's uh. interesting is is that behind some of these stones and in the walls, you'll find megalithic blocks. So. It's kind of an interesting, like, how did a megalithic block get in? It's just thrown in there as rubble. Like, someone made those walls, or someone maybe it was used as a retaining wall later. I don't know because, but when you see like in a backfill, like, oh well, they've they've taken a stone that they found and they've used it as material in a backfill. It's pretty clear indication to me that it was a repair. Like there was, they were backfilling these walls as part of a repair process and using blocks that had fallen off the walls and they'd found somewhere else. Maybe they couldn't find where it originally went. So to me, it's like. Mm. You wouldn't do that in the if that was the original building. You know, if you built this site originally, you wouldn't you wouldn't just backfill with a, a shaped block. You know, that you went to the trouble of shaping and fitting somewhere. No, no, that's pretty you much just my use point. Rubble, you'd use the, right. yeah bits of stone that you find on the ground. But um, it's just mind boggling. The whole thing is mind boggling. I can't figure out. Some people don't even. Some people say it's a fortress. Some say right. it's a complete ceremonial site. Mm -hmm. apparently it wasn't a settlement Saxe man but i don't know it's it, the whole thing is i think the lack of written record yeah. is a real problem isn't it no one really knows yeah definitely yeah, and even the spanish chronicles you don't know how much politics is involved you don't know <laughs> what they were told to, you know you don't know if, if to believe them or not it's because you know yeah yeah it's 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 the the the, the whole um 
the colonial imperative of superiority, right? I mean, there's a and, and how yeah. much it comes down to it. A similar thing happened in you know, North American culture with with. I was talking to Hugh Newman the other day. It's a, I had an interesting podcast with him, and we were talking about kind of that that imperative. One of the reasons why things like giants and that got covered up back in the day was because there was an imperative to to be superior, like the, the, the colonial imperative of the white man, all that sort of stuff at that time uh, was one of the reasons why they would sort of hide some of that thing, anything that suggested, oh, these people were bigger and stronger than we are or something like that. Um, and it just, it's just a similar thing that could have happened in the history. And as you say, it's just a big mystery. We don't know. It's the Inca. You hear varying conflicting stories about what the Inca said about this. They, Some people, they say that, you know, it appeared overnight. Uh, there's other accounts where they say these things were here when they got here. Um, but there's and really nowhere where they claim to have built it. Now, there, there are some accounts from the Spanish. I think Garcilaso de la Vega is one of them where he did witness the Inca trying to move large stones. Like they would, but, but really zero technology involved uh, in this. They were just using ropes and manpower, no pulleys, no levers. And I think what he was witnessing was their ongoing efforts to repair and restore these places. Because I don't, you know, I, there's other legends like the legend of the, the lazy stone that fell down a hill. We'll get to that when we actually get to that, that stone. Um, because the amount of people as well, the amount of people you need to get this done. Because I think what huge. this video is showing me is the scale. It's it's huge, isn't it? It's absolutely oh. huge. Yeah, and I I suspect it's a fraction of what was here too. Like yeah, that. yeah, because it, we know they were destroyed by the Spanish to an extent. It was it's also interesting because that you know the the appearing overnight legend it, it right. that recurs in so many sites. You know, I mean, there's the uh, the the legend about a ball back, for example, that, you know, Cain mm -hmm. built it in a fit of rage in one night. And then, uh, Nan made all the same thing. The two brothers in, in one night floated all the stones over and built that place. It's, it's a kind of a similar theme. It is it's interesting. Yeah, it is the whole Shamir thing, which well, you guys explained to me. Then so this is interesting. So this is this, I wanted to pause here and just briefly mention this yeah. here because most people like are that. familiar with that puffy shaped, um, no straight lines, right? And in, in the in those zigzag walls, that's the real famous part of Saxe Huaman. However, there was a tremendous amount of pretty linear construction, and you, the similar thing to what you see inside the Corrie which is the big now it's a Catholic church in in Cusco in the center, but it's a megalithic building. Uh, this is what's left of some of these blocks. Now, on top of the hill where Sax those those zigzag walls, the different terraces go up to the top of the hill, and we'll go up there and look at that in this. But there was this. There were, you know, levels to the not only the wall, but on top of the hill, there was this a construction that had multiple levels to it as well, and it was pretty much all quarried, all recycled. Wow. So, and you can see how these blocks are quite Head square, and yeah. they've got really nice faces on them. So, a lot of these blocks were very valuable building material when the Spanish rolled up, and when they were building their churches, their villas, their homes in Cusco, they, this was the source they used for a lot of that building material. And and what's interesting is you can find these blocks. A lot of this stuff in all of those like old colonial style buildings down in Cusco, which we will take a look at a couple pictures. But just tooling around in Cusco is a great experience because a lot of these churches you, you have megalithic colonial. It, it's all you see the blocks being reused in in later construction, and then when yeah. they would have to do their own stuff and use concrete, it's just Cusco is like one of my favorite places because you've got so many different styles of architecture right up to modern architecture piled up on top of it. You've got you know megalithic yeah. Inca colonial and then modern sometimes all in the same building yeah but yeah this, i mean there's just an element of saxe woman that most people don't realize was here was this linear a lot of square blocks this is also andesite this isn't uh i this isn't the uh the limestone you you have molten you do have uh different types of stone here as well and yeah so this is kind of proceeding up towards the top of the hill on top of the so uh, those square blocks you say were from the top of the hill. Are they from the structures on the top or the, well, mostly? Those... I think so. Yep, and we'll yeah. see that here. But they're so kind of like people say there were towers and that's right. There's all, all sorts of theories that there could be yeah. some of them temples to the rain god and all sorts because on top of the hill. I was, I was reading recently, but mm -hmm. like I say, a lot of it is guesswork because nobody nobody knows for sure. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's is a Viracocha shrine. No, no one knows. Right. Yeah. You know, and are if... the squarest blocks? Uh, all of the harder stone or are, are there some square limestone blocks as well? I can't, I don't know. There's a lot of andesite up here. There's, and a lot of this may also be some Inca work 
Um, but this this is, mm. I, I'm sure there's some limestone up here too. The, the but there's an awful lot of andesite. Um, and again, here's an issue. So this is like a good example of one of these walls. Where, see both sides of this, and it's, it's it is not it's not precisely made in here. This was backfilled, so this may have been constructed by the Inca parts of this and then backfilled with other material and this is the type of thing i was talking about where in this backfill they would find megalithic blocks that had been used as backfill yeah. which is like a clear clear indication that came later but you can kind of see this here but there's this big circular series yeah. of, of rings and this is this is a really well known i know there's a couple of people that have some drone footage of it this would be a great a great place to, to get some drone footage of it but apparently this was multiple levels high one of those this was a big circular con like building that had a number of floors and levels in it and this was a big source of the quarried material as well and this is what's left today of it you can't you can't walk over there there's there's guards and they you can't get up close to all this stuff there's um and there's still some active work they're kind of still digging around here and there at least when i was there last which was several years ago at this point and you I can wanted see to ask you about the uh going back down to the to the walls real quick mm -hmm. um they look like at the corners after a corner on the inside of the corner, there's like a huge doorway. Mm -hmm. You had one shot where you were looking down and you could see a bunch of the corners down there and there are just these massive stones on either side. And there's an opening where you can come up. Do yep. you think that was a, that that's all original? I mean, they haven't, you think those think were so. passageways? Yep, I do. And we'll get back down there. Let's let's, let's we, we'll, we'll get back down there and, and go through that stuff in, in detail. Okay, there's cool. more of that. Uh, this is, and this is kind of the view from up on top. Let's looking over the back of the hill now. So the zigzag walls behind us. This is down looking down into Cusco, the valley. So this is probably more closer to twelve thousand feet. I think Cusco itself is at eleven five. Um, so <laughs> it's a good test on on altitude sickness. But previously, you know, I think this whole construction flowed down this hill. This whole hill, all the way down into the Cusco. Yeah, you think it's a place where the, the elite of the day would have lived. You know, looking over their empire, looking over the. Yeah. The city, but well, you think it'd be more, yeah, more than a temple, more than a, a I don't know, a fortress. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. castle slash fortress. Yeah, somewhere right. where where the leaders would be to look it, over everybody, and it's defensive and it's safe. They they definitely so it's connected to the city. There's there were rumors, and this is kind of a hearsay. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, there's I about that. There's, there's tunnels, tunnels underneath, right? There's tunnels underneath uh, Cusco. There's tons. Of, there's lots of evidence, anecdotal mm -hmm. evidence. And what they would say was, and so here we go, Kyle, we're actually going down into the terraces now and where you see these passageways. But there's a story of like this tunnel that connects from this famous thing inside the Coricanche, it's like this wellstone that goes down and it and it runs up to into Saxe Huaman. So apparently what they would do, the Inca, they would have the, the royal Inca, the, 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 the royal family or the, the high priest or whatever, they would start the ceremony in the in Coricancha and then they would have the you know the proceedings would then go up and the whole crowd and everyone would walk up to Saxe Huaman. But at the they would basically go and they would start the ceremonies down there and then the, the royalty and the high priest would jump in this tunnel, get up here before everyone else, and then appear like magic up at Saxe Huaman. So it's like they would you know you're uh, gods or you have this magical ability to get up there. Um, and um, yeah, so there's definitely there's sorry I got to also say about the footage. Lots of fast panning going on and short eclipse. This was one of the first times I was really filming on a site, so uh, I got a lot better at this oh, that's great. as the years went by. But there's yeah, apologies for like the fast <coughs> panning. Um, but yeah, the, you know, I Probably. think there's there's a lot underneath the ground at these places. You know, that there's there's stories yeah. of in modern times where they'd be excavating in the street in Cusco, trying to put in utility lines or something, and find a staircase that goes down. Um, oh man, the whole. Cory Cancha, like there's all sorts of of stories and legends and pictures even of of un, of things underneath the floor tiles of the Cory Cancha leading down into the underground. That's that's why I think the Cory Cancha could almost be its own episode. There's there's quite yeah. a bit going on there and a lot of secretive, a, a lot of secrets and I think it's uh, it's all covered up by the church now. Um, Say no more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Father Crespi, et cetera, et cetera. It is, yeah. <coughs> but again, it's a good example, rebuild walls. Like this is reconstructed, uh, at least repaired. No Passar. Let's see. We don't, we don't really know the, the complete history, do we, of the valley? I mean, 
how far what do archaeologists say how far it goes back i mean i know there's the the wari culture which is an empire that crumbled about a thousand a.d before that i don't know what what they've actually recorded before that and that's the the mystery isn't it sorry about that let me just um so there's there's a number of in in the sacred valley I don't. They don't say that this goes back much further than that. But there are other parts of South America and, and Peru in particular that go back much further. Like Corral goes back. Yeah, 5, which I did 000. a video on recently. Yeah. And I've, in fact, that's a good site to visit. Cause I've been out to Corral and I filmed there. It's not a whole. I mean, it's it's very different. To, it's down on the coastal desert. Um, and there's pyramids and all sorts of things there. And that goes back five thousand years. You know, that's legitimately. Yeah, at the least. Same age I mean, as they even they dated that from the. From like the sand, well, the, the bags, haven't they? They've, they've yep. got bags that they found, which dated to the same as the, you know, two thousand six hundred BC. Right. But they rec- they think it goes much much further back. So right. that's ridiculous. That's crazy, and yeah. no one knows about this. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and the other the other one for me is is Chavin, the Chavin culture. I've I've been halfway mm. through. I have a video for Chavin written and it's some spectacular footage. Um, and the Ch- I just want to pause here and point something out too. Um, the Chavin culture goes back much further than than the Inca as well. Like it's like a thousands of years earlier and it's supposedly the birthplace of it. There's some people, because there's competing theories about where the Inca eventually originally came from. A lot of people, a lot of people say it was uh, Pumapunku, Tiwanaku region. And then they moved north um, from there into the Sacred Valley. Uh, and there's some similarities certainly between Chavin. You also have like weird similarities between Pumapunku and Chavin, and Chavin's to the north. So Chavin's yeah. north of Lima. It's in a different mountain range. It's into, and it's not connected to like the the Inca road system or anything. It's a real unique little site. Very few people go there anymore. Uh, it's great to visit. It's a little bit out of the way, but um, really, really worth seeing. And it's uh, it's very interesting. But there's also examples of megalithic work there as well. Like a lot of this stuff, it's there's a there's these megalithic foundations there but there's pretty clearly a lot of other work that went on after that like reassembling it yeah. plus there was earthquakes and sort of well-known uh, things that happened on that site then you've got the god on you know, the kind of viracocha tiwanaku yeah. god on the gateway yeah. that's also seen at the chavin site as well a different that's, version of it that's what i'm yeah you that's, think that's what yeah I'm talking so those about. two it's called the raymondi stone or the chavin stone or something it's Ramondi Stella. they're both yeah. almost like ident- yeah, identical gods but separated by time and distance that's right and probably both led into the inca somehow i don't know it's just i think there's so many tribes so many different people yeah and the whole area was you know they, they all seem to come to cusco all from different backgrounds maybe and then this was before the inca even arrived yeah and they all came together yeah, and, and built probably their own culture i don't know whether this was there already whether they had brought their expertise and that's the great mystery because there's little work done, no written record, and we're just left to look at physical, you know, archaeology, stonework, and try and figure out what it is. That's right. Yeah, it's a real. There, that's that's. It's just a huge mystery. And I'll, I'll let this footage play, but and we can keep talking about. It. I just wanted to point out you you see this on the Corrikanch and other ones. These like these holes through the walls. These little like it's almost as if they were drain spouts or something. I I don't know why they're there, but you see them. In a, at a lot of places, including the Corrikancha and other constructions, megalithic sites where you have these holes through the walls. It's it's kind of odd. Uh, you, well, the stonework's only half the story, isn't it? Because the irrigation and the terraces. So that was a huge part of the preparation of the land. Whoever did this, it was mm. preparing the farmland, irrigation. They, cause it was, there's loads of streams in the Cusco Valley, and they just directed the streams so that the yeah. fields could get water. But then yeah. the water's got to go somewhere. And they would probably know that the water would weather and erode these rocks. So water spouts would be a brilliant idea, um, yeah. which is exactly what we see. It's interesting because there's no uh, leathering pattern below. Like you would normally see if water had been flowing out of those holes That's often, you would see a, you know, you'd see a splash mark or whatever you would call it down below it. And it's, right. yeah, somebody's cleaned it off or that's not what they were doing. Yeah, I, I don't know. Was, put in there that's yeah. maybe something yeah maybe it wasn't for water at all it's that's it's just all speculation when it comes to this side yeah. it's crazy they i mean and the inca were masters of this type of stuff too like the inca tipon yes. there's, there's a few sites like tipon that definitely are inca they there's some megalithic stones that they've used in in parts of it but 
they were incredible uh, at creating these water gardens. And uh, all right, looks like so that's a different kind of stone stuck in the middle of that wall. Different color. Looks oh, like yeah. it's been yeah, yeah. either well reconstructed there. or that's yeah significant. Don't know. Yeah. That's, open it up. That's where the treasure. I think is. it's another animal. <laughs> another animal. Another picture. animal. What shape? is it? Let's guess the animal. <laughs> yeah, like let's see. There's a. This could be a two legs. It's, it's a bird. It's a yeah. beak. Yep, it's a, a it's a puma. Look, it's no, it's definitely. A, it's a poodle. I see a poodle. Look, here's a poodle. No, it's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I see all of that. You guys are right. I think it's the, also. Just, I'm yeah. noticing that the blocks at the at the base are in some cases not there, but in some cases are much more weathered. Right. Than mm. the blocks right above. Yeah, it's, it's ah. that's also interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to pound this thing with the ground penetrating radar and really map it out if we could. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I agree with Matt. I think the more study, the better. Um, that you know, we should be doing more to figure this out. Although I love ancient mysteries, I absolutely hate them as well because I want to know. You know, yep. <laughs> yeah, human, humans built them, right? You know, I don't. I mean, I don't think it's aliens. People do, but I don't think aliens. But I think it's humans built them. But I just want to know who, when, why, and and move on. I just. How? It annoys me that I can't work it out. I just want to find the logical answer. I always think it's, it's got a purpose. They didn't do it for no reason. Right. How they did it somehow, you know, whether there's lost technology, whether there's just some really obvious technique we just completely all miss, um, whether they ha had a million people building this wall, therefore it's probably quite easy. Obviously that didn't happen, but <laughs> there must be a way of doing it and a, a reason for it. And the, and the stone nubs at the bottom that everyone... Is talking about on Twitter and everywhere else. There's, mm -hmm. there's a purpose for all this stuff, and yeah, the nubs. And what the is it? <laughs> are, are fascinating parts, and it's you know it seems to me because in some cases you see these nubs that are very sharp and they actually extend out quite far. Yep. From the original block, whereas a lot of these they're so it's like they're so worn down that they're almost invisible. Yeah. Uh, it's and that you know you were talking about erosion and impossible ch uh, checking of age. If those nubs, we don't have any way of knowing this, but if those nubs used to be sharp and extend out far, yeah. they've been heavily eroded. They have. Yeah. It's, you know, it's interesting, and I, I I'll tease this podcast I did with Hugh Newman again. He he had gave me some fresh perspective on what the the nubs and the scoop marks could be. I and I liked his explanation for it. It's and it. It's uh, he explains it well in this podcast, which hopefully I'll release here in a, a week or so. Um, All right, but it's to. yeah, and it was a new explanation for it, which made some sense to me. And then, uh, you know, I was like, oh, that that could be a good explanation for the scoops and the nubs. And I'm interested to hear what the the Twitter crew, uh, and the guys yeah, that are really, I, like I, Andrew Fink. I Andrew like Fink ideas. These guys. Yeah, I like the theories. I like the ideas because. I think putting something out there is good. It's going to get scrutinized. You know, I've, I've done every idea on the Great Pyramid in the past from a giant water pump to a yeah. power station to everything to ending up with Khufu's tomb, you know, as everyone knows. <laughs> but <laughs> it's kind of, you know, if you don't put ideas out there and don't look at them, you're never going to find out the answer. And the same right. with the nubs. I mean, I've, I've followed the guys on, on Twitter and everything from Stone Language to some of them were for lifting, some of them were for... There's so many different ideas, and I think right. you throw them all out there, but all of a sudden there'll be evidence against your idea, and then back to square one, which is yeah. why it's a mystery. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Yeah, it's good. It needs to be tested in that marketplace of ideas. Like that's yeah. You don't shouldn't. I try not to be attached to any one particular theory. Like my my opinion on this stuff is as a result of you know years of careful consideration. Like I have a. And and but I'm still willing to throw it out in the in the in light of new evidence. Like it's got you know logical, got to make sense, and and you go through that process. But it's it's dangerous to get too attached to one theory or the other. I just, I, I think sure. the the older civilization, the the precursor civilization, to me is the one that makes the most sense based on all the evidence we have, based on what the ancients themselves said, based on the new uh, evidence coming from the scientific realm in terms of the Younger Dryas Cataclysm, the extension of the human timeline, genetics. There's a lot that suggests that our past is way longer and more complicated uh, than we thought it was. And, and also and, there's a, sorry, on that pitch there, there's a base they're sitting on. Yeah, yeah I was right. talking about a base earlier. Is that yeah. some kind of repair or is that original? That looks like bedrock that's been yeah. leveled that's for the rocks. I, I don't know, that's what... I've it looks like it's places, flowing yeah, away. I've read in a couple of places that they're supposed to be socketed into bedrock. So mm. I like the even more stability. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, like like the second would... pyramid. That's that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lock yeah, it into right. the ground. <laughs> I would like to say that there there does seem to to be a pattern in the in the construction. I mean, it's not. It looks random at first glance, but as you're going along, you see there's similar things. A pattern of of like the sort of a widening and narrowing line of the courses, and when it mm. when it widens, it's like there's that paw paw print. It's it's a sort of a central stone with all these stones laid around it. Yep. And then the courses kind of come together again and then they widen right. back apart and it's like, I don't know, it's really, really beautiful. You have the huge it stones is. on the corners always. The, uh, yeah, yes. and some of these are giant, gigantic. I'm pretty, I think I've heard, you know, 150, 200 ton, some of these stones. Like yeah. Massive. I heard the um, same. Yeah, yeah, look so, at the joints between those. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> just amazing. We, we didn't even talk about it because it, <laughs> we just sort of, it's one of those things people realize, but... Again, no mortar, the, but the joinery is so fine. Even with the large stones, you can't stick a credit card between these joints. It's just so well, well done. And that's what blows my mind about this stuff is that it's there's nothing, and there's no straight lines on on these joints. Like you have to, it's like this three dimensional puzzle that you then you have to match. Each surface has to match the other surface perfectly. And we'll get to, we'll get actually a good look later on in Cusco it's some of the inside surfaces of these joins which is where I think some of the real evidence for some form of advanced shaping or stone some way of shaping the stone must have occurred because it's not just a surface join like that join it go it penetrates into the yeah into the stone it's, it's that depth and that they match perfectly along their depth uh, there was a giant rock a, a couple of seconds back in the video that had a lip at the bottom, like it was missing something that used to be socketed into it. Yes, it, that's what I was going to say. It what looked like that? there was a giant. Yeah, keep going back. It was missing. like three corners back. Or there was something. a doorway. There was an opening. Yeah, right there. Right there. Keep going this back one? a little, no, bit, little bit, little bit further. Yeah. There oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll come. I think it's around this corner here. It's like it's missing. Oh, it's around here. Yeah. Yeah, it's that corner. Yeah, it's like it was. It's there was something socketed there. It looks like almost these blocks here are so rough, aren't they? Yeah, they're incredibly rough. So rough. It's like right. It's almost like I don't care how it looks as long as it's it does its job. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This see, here? that looks like it's been yeah. for a joint. Yeah, it's been faced on that side for. Mm -hmm. to... This looks like the phase one masonry that you talked about. Um, Hunnan puncher. Your videos, yeah, where yeah. it's the huge megalithic blocks that have been shaped. Yeah, so it's like that block's been reused for mm. this phase for that cornerstone. I don't know. Yeah, it's so it, old; it's heavily eroded. You know, it's if we get time, I'd love to show a quick. Maybe after one of the breaks, we can do a quick uh, look at Kenko because this is very similar to Kenko, which is again this is mostly the second style. It's a, it's a real brief mm. overview of the styles. The first one, Hun and Pacha, the older style. And we'll see, there are examples of it, not on the zigzag wall, but after a break, we'll, we'll see the other side of Saxe Huaman where there's a fair bit of Hunan Pacha, which is the, it's the monolithic rock. It's the living rock of the mountain that's been shaped. Yes. Doesn't, it's not made up of blocks. It's not cellular. That, that's all, the ten, if that's there, that's always the lowest layer that's on the bottom. It always, mm. always looks to be the most weathered and, and just visually the oldest. Not that, you know, I'm an expert on how stone ages, but a lot of that stuff looks tremendously ancient to me. And then... You, then it, and it shares some characteristics with this, which is Urin Pacha, the, the cellular, um, you know, polygonal mm. walls. This is all Urin Pacha here, uh, in my in my mind. And it's it shares like the vitrification. It shares some of the the giant aspect yeah. of it. In some cases, some of the precision of the surfaces and the joinery. And then you have Ikun Pacha, which is this stuff here, which is more or less the Inca work. It's the rough stone. Uh, you see those three styles. We'll see that yeah, first speak, style a bit more later. Speaking of a break, Kyle and I have been so fascinated by the video that we were not watching the timer. So yeah, we okay. can take one. <laughs> all right, cool. let's, all right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and finish yeah. up on the on the wall. All right, and we're back. And uh, yeah, I don't know where we're going, but this is absolutely fascinating, Ben. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's happy to share the footage. We we're saying in the break that it's just the format's great. Like there's so many <laughs> sites in Peru and so many of these places where there's. There's not a lot of research. There's just not much to say about a lot of the sites, but it, the, just looking at that footage and looking at them, uh, it, I think is pretty entertaining. It's they're tough to make kind of research, produce videos on on a, on a lot of these places. So I like this format where you get we get to kind of spend a bit more time with raw footage and just have a yeah. good look around. Yeah, I think for me, where I'm just you know 
everyone's seen my videos where it's just images that I'm showing. And, and on, on the internet, you can only find certain images. You can't get a feel for what the place is actually like. So right. this is invaluable for anyone trying to research. You can't get there yourself. I totally agree. It's exactly right. If you get the scale, uh, and as he's moving through, you know, you just it's you start to understand the complexity of the problem. Right. Uh, now, look, there's another. Is that another paw? It is. Big, yeah, you could call it another yeah. big paw. Yep. And just the the scoop marks in the stone are very interesting to me. I, you know, there's nubs and then there's there's scoops. Like it's like yeah. material is inverted. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So going back to what you were saying in the beginning about the quarrying, uh, you think that the or you were saying that the Inca uh, just kind of used whatever was laying around. So these walls obviously or don't look like they have a top. So it looks unless you think it was designed that way. I don't know. But where are all the stones that fell off? Are I they think, are they all in the backfill where they cleaned out by the Inca? I think I. Th- I think there were, these were probably a little bit taller. I think in some of these, some of these courses or terraces may have had roofing over them as well. But originally, and I, but yeah, they would. You, you. I think they recycled a lot of the stone that they could. They would put together and they'd put back the stones that they could figure out where they went. I think, but and yeah, you, there's a lot of this material was was used. I mean, I don't know where the big stones ended up. I mean, a lot of it may have been in the may Spanish been as well. And the Spanish destroy some of it. They as well. they definitely destroyed a lot of it. But you, I mean, this would be hard work trying to destroy it. Honestly, you, you kind of yeah. got to go at yes. it with a pickaxe. Or, they couldn't do much more than that. <laughs> yeah, right. They, one rock. The, I think you're looking at the big stuff that they couldn't destroy. Like they just couldn't. Mm. Um, so they may, you know, a lot of that stuff up top may, yeah, smashed up and like maybe some of these smaller stones are chunks of the larger stone. Like it, it almost looks like like pieces like this that were then reused mm. to to rebuild walls. Uh, it's just, and that's unlike, just a guess too. Like I don't know. <laughs> it's very unlike Egypt when we, you know, we're going through the. You're walking around the pyramid in the videos uh, of the last swap cast, mm-hmm. and there's just rubble everywhere. Right. Whereas here, it's like very clean. Right. Uh, so it's curious. Yeah, a lot of it's been carted off, and as I said, there was a lot of digging that went on here in that colonial period. A lot of people digging around for treasure, just trying to dig stuff up. They yeah. thought there was gold. I mean. That was also the Spanish would break into stuff. They they thought there were vaults in some of the stone. They thought there was you know they just destroy stuff looking for gold. Um, there's some really really bad like it's just reprehensible behavior. Um, it's hard not to just condemn it. So uh, I did want to I want to mention this briefly too it's because so this is kind of looking away that again the zigzag wall is now behind us in the field and behind it there's a whole hill and then Saxaquaman extends over this hill. And you can see this like extruded stone mm. that's natural yeah, okay. shaping, but you also have like these carved shapes in the stone. You can kind of see everywhere. It's like work surfaces everywhere, uh, everywhere you look. And then some of them are quite regular and quite flat and square. square yeah. Uh, and there's a very famous little installation up on top of here that we'll get to called the Inca Thrones. They call them Inca Thrones, but it's oh, like yeah. a, a stepped pattern that's carved into it. And this is. Hun and Pacha. Like this is the the monolithic work that's been done into the uh, the living rock of the mountain itself. It's really interesting. A lot of people say it's quarrying. I don't. I think there's examples of where it's clearly not quarrying, uh, and it was done for some other purpose. So yeah, so we pan around. You can see there's the the zigzag wall. You kind of walk up on top of these hills behind it. Well, I'm very interested in that uh, geological formation back there. What what is? Mm. How do you think that came about? It's hard to see without looking close. It looks like let's have a look. It is like lava. It looks like a valley going. Yeah. Yeah. It's it depends what it is again. I mean the little valley could have been formed by a stream that you know could could have run down the hill, eroding it to form like a V. It's if so it's lime if it's smooth curve. Those like, steps. Yeah. yeah, it's to me it's it looks like it's extrude almost like a like it's a, a platonic, I think is the term. Like it's formed from an extrusion. Uh, and of heat that's formed that, and it's either come back, come up to the surface that's been pushed up. There's actually a place around the back called the Inca Slides, and it's so well polished. It's like this, and it flows down a hill, and all the little kids will get up and slide down, and you'll just like see this. <laughs> any given day, it's actually one. There's a train of like little kids sliding down these Inca Slides at the back of uh, Saxaquaman. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It all comes down to the to the rock type again, though. It, mm. you know, 
what is it? We don't know what it is yet. If it, if it is, it could well be a lava flow. It could be a, a limestone beds that have been polished, you know, weathered by water. I think it's we don't know, side. but it's. I think it's andesite. Sorry? I don't. I don't think the limestone is natural to this hilltop. I think it's andesite. Right. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. and, and this right here, just so when we pan across it, this is what's called the Inca Thrones, and these are these regular carved sort of stepped platforms right into the rock here, and it's like square corners. You know, there's uh It's just it's it's quite regular, um, and it's good work. I got the idea, you know, looking through this, and, and this is an indication of it, and there's Here's plenty of other places around here and in peru and in the valley that are like this that mm -hmm. they kind of it's like somebody was going through the area carving whimsical almost whimsically carving stuff into the bedrock you know it's yeah. like they were playing it was it's like just for fun <laughs> yeah it's like they were playing with a tool that was very powerful and they're just like well what can i do with this let's cut, let's cut some <laughs> shapes out here and oh yeah and then you move on to the next spot and try something else and you know Yep. Because it's it's hard to see how they were functional, but maybe they were. I don't know. But it's almost artistically whimsical. Like, you know, I was imagining, you know, you a little kid gets a <clears throat> steals a power tool out of his dad's workshop and goes out in the woods <laughs> woods and starts cutting stuff. <laughs> right. You end up with trees with little notches cut out of them. And, uh, <laughs> it's an know. experience. <laughs> yeah. Just playing yeah, it, with a tool. It's, a, it's it, really strange. You or see it, it could be that everywhere. whatever there was an inclusion in the rock that they wanted yeah, for a okay. specific part of the building. And they're like, oh, look at this crystal. Let's cut that out, you yeah. know. Uh, With a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let, me, let me pull something up here that um, Temple of the Moon. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. It's, so this, this to me, this is just – so here's a good example of it. Like this is it, – it's almost like as if it was flowing too. It's this weird – oh, that's a little jerky. Uh, settle down. It's trying to, it is pulling this over a network for me too. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you up on top of the Temple of the Moon, but this is that, this these weird, just random, and you see this everywhere. Like you could probably just, everywhere. there's there's in areas that aren't riped off, they're not part of sites. You just see this on bedrock. I mean, I don't know why. It's, it's like, and the, the so, angles are so well we done, but they thought, I will leave the rest. We'll do these bits yeah. nicer and just forget the back of it. <laughs> so, That's what I mean. It's like the tool that they were using gave them precision, but they weren't really actually worried about precision. But when they were making these cuts, it's flat and gives you sharp edges, you know, like like the nature of the tool did yeah. that. Yeah. It, I it's don't, weird. It is. And it to me, again, looks ancient. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just yeah. the stone. It's just weathered. It just seems more... What I, this, is the, this is an area called the Temple of the Moon that's over here. You walk... And again, this is... A, all of these sites... This is around Cusco. You visit all these in a day from Cusco. It's just up on the hills around Cusco. Let me skip forward real quick. We'll come back to Saxe in a minute. I just wanted to show you what's on top of the Temple of the Moon here. And yes. this is actually, there's a cave. There's a there's the whole big sperm thing on the wall going in here. It's quite famous. Uh, but up on top of this and inside, this is all shaped from that living rock. You can see, yeah. It's uh, and, and just looks incredibly ancient. Again, like this is this is an, this is part of it. All of this right. has been shaped, and it's just all part of that living rock, yes, and it's just. Oh yeah, this you can see. Inca and yeah, this is the hot looks... pacha. It's it's rock cut as opposed yep. to megalithic. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I don't understand it. I just it, and there's in some areas like there's circular formations. There's uh, little bowls with channels, almost as if the stone's been melted. It's. Um, it's insane. Like there's, you know, there's these weird markings in all of them, but it's undeniably been shaped. There's, you know, it's not a natural. Um, this this looks shaped. more limestone with all the all the holes in it. It looks, right. yeah, it looks more. I don't, know, I don't know if it is, but it it looks mm -hmm. more limestoney. But I yeah. just find it so weird that it all looks half finished. <laughs> like it's like building the Great Pyramid, but I'll, I'll leave the west side just to leave that rough. It's like they've created these amazing structures, these steps, these lovely faces, and then I'll forget the other bit. I can't be bothered with that. <laughs> Let's go to the next <laughs> thing. Let's build a wall over there instead. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's super that's random. what I'm saying. It's almost whimsical, right? It's just amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, and I I, I really have problem uh, trying to understand it. I mean, there's again, this is in the same area. I want to I want to just really quickly uh, get to like this. Um, See these these channels that are cut in it that, that they're like water channel. There's a couple of like circle. Yep. Uh, let me. I know this is flipping around for you guys. Sorry about that. Let me put it over here so you can actually see it. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. And 
Yeah, again, all shaped. I, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to find something specific here. Very odd though. And again, it's either either half finished or just incredibly weathered. Like, like, like yeah. outside the like hundreds of thousands of years. Who knows? It just to me, it's I, I don't. Um, I, I just can't compute with this stuff. Like a lot of a lot of this. There's. I'm trying to find a specific thing. Because some cut faces there look is. nice so and stuff. flat still. Look at that bowl. Yeah, it looks. Yeah. It looks yeah. beautifully based to it. It looked like you know the bowl looks kind of unweathered, but all around it the rock is just yeah. been left. I don't know. Yeah, it's just stuff. It stuff's everywhere. You know, it's just it doesn't. It's random. Whimsical's a good a good term. I said, and so you yeah. could spend hours just wandering around these sites, and it's just it, the picture doesn't become any clearer. Uh, it's very mysterious and the, the classic. Maybe it's the training Anchor camp throne. where they train to yeah. create the big right. walls. Yeah. Go and play on these on these rocks. Yeah. And <laughs> if you do a nice straight right angle, you can go onto the main site. Yeah. <laughs> this is the training site. Yeah. If it's not a right angle, you're out. Yeah, like this. <laughs> on the fields and the farms. <laughs> it just seems Channels. like, you know, if you're using conventional known methods with chisels and stuff, it seems like a lot of work for what? <laughs> what were they doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. And how did it get in this state? Like, what was it for? Like, what was here? Yeah. It, yeah, anyway, so the, the, we'll get into more Peru and, and more of these weird little uh, corners of it uh, in some more um, in some more uh, sessions. Let's, but let's get back to Saxe. That's, that's, we'll where, they were, that's where they were calibrating the Shamir. <laughs> so this is Shamir calibration site, yeah. yeah. So and this is probably worth mentioning. A bit more because, to the left, a bit more. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more, Perfect. just to dial the power up. Yeah, the Shamir is an interesting uh, legend. I had not... No, I didn't know about this, and you guys told me about it. I think it was after the show, the last swapcast. But the the, okay. the legends of the Shamir is a, you know, comes from like I think Jewish tales of of mm. how Moses carved the Ten Commandments on the stone, and and the the temple in uh, Jerusalem was built, and you, yes. it was silent. You couldn't. There was no pickaxes, and it's it was a tool that was apparently you could use to shape stone effortlessly, which is very That's right. very interesting. So it it is something yeah. that. I want to do more research on, figure out. Um, yeah, we can talk more. Anyway, so I'll set up this footage too. Again, this kind of looks like what we were just looking at, but this is also Saxe Huaman over the back of that hill with the extruded uh, stone. So okay. this sort of wanders out into this acreage that's behind this hill that then, and, and, and again, on the other side from where the, the zigzag wall is. So, and this is a lot of the Hanan Pacha worked stone and what you'll see in a lot of this are these very strange shapes i think one thing you notice here is also cataclysmic damage it's tremendous looks mm. like looks like it's been jumbled up like upside down staircases things have been moved around and some of them quite big chunks of rock uh and just shaped stone everywhere really odd um oh yeah look at that yeah that is just Almost like amazing. it's upside down yeah. yeah, look like it's like there's your upside down staircase. Looks like it's oh, wow. there's a few yeah. of those have been flipped over. <laughs> that's so strange. Yeah, that's a, and that's big. It would take a lot of force to flip that over, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Is and, there any indication that that whole section on the right was on top of the left part? Could have been. I don't know that people have done research to try and match shapes together like that. It's it's so random. Well, I don't know. Um, I mean, looking on that hallway you just passed, it's like those, was, those yeah, two walls look pretty parallel. Maybe <laughs> yeah, true. Cut it like that. You could spend a lifetime working on this and, and find no answers. <laughs> I think so. I'm sure, if you could yeah. get in there and get like get get a, a point cloud with lidar of the shapes of them, and then use a computer to computer see if you to turn model it yeah. together. Yeah, that um, would be cool. That's yeah. what they did with Tio and Arco, isn't it? Puma Pumku, Puma mm -hmm. Pumku. They. They got all the shapes, and they tried, someone tried to rebuild them with a model to try and see what the temple would have looked like. And yeah. it's quite an interesting study to read it and see that what they actually created. But uh, doing it here would be pretty difficult. It would be tough. Yeah, yeah. Like half, a lot of them are half buried. It looks like too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed, well, yeah, it's half buried, and it's and here's a good example of something that you also see on a lot of these South American sites. And it's that, and I mentioned it in my videos because, and Brian and a bunch of people mention it. It's the circular protection and the reverence that seems to have been held for the older work. Like so, this stuff in the center that's the gray, the, the grayer color, the monolithic work, Hun and Pacha. It's like assuming it's the oldest style. 
you then have the Uran Pacha, the megalithic work is created almost lovingly or protectively around it. Like this is actually a big circle. You see this in a lot of places. Mm. This crazy, random, whimsical stonework seems to have been very highly prized and respected by later builders, also than the Inca. So here's an example. You see all three styles of, of, of masonry here. This shaped stone in the center with the, mon the monolithic stuff. You have the megalithic work, and then you have the smaller stones from what is the Inca work. But that all, it always seems to be very protective of the oldest part of it. This, this what appears to be the oldest part of it to me anyway. So the, it's like the Inca had respect for those that built the walls, that, and then both of them had respect for those that built these things. It's, it's kind of that's it's strange. It's like a continuation of a culture that may span however many years yeah. they had the same belief system almost like yeah like until a, the spanish arrived and thought you know forget the lot of it let's destroy it all, burn it it's, all. it's kind of set that on fire and start <laughs> over yeah yeah, burn yeah. It well it's like what we all do yeah all the cultures of yeah. western cultures do that don't they british culture as well of them that every in history the, destroy something and rebuild that well that was Someone that's like that, that colonial period right that's what led us to it, it yeah this is this is interesting too again a sign of damage where i think that what's happened here these big chunks have been moved around at some point that may and may also indicate that this megalithic stuff is quite old because this is one of the rarest things where you'll see a megalithic block that goes behind or it's as if this this work this hunan pacha work is big chunk of rock has basically been moved or or has ended up in front of the block so you can see here it's kind of moved or it's it's shifted where you've got this block stuck behind it. Very rarely that do you see examples of oh yeah the megalithic work like this has clearly been moved after I think after these blocks were put here. But in almost every yeah. other case, always you find that this megalithic stuff is this, these cellular blocks are on top of the older style. It was onto um, it, yeah, and yeah. protecting it, yeah. But there's there are a couple of places where it's like, all right, something happened. I at least it, I think that's an explanation for it to you know the exception case it's like well this this big chunk has been moved or something happened it was an earthquake or it was a who knows like a giant just cataclysm perhaps yeah <laughs> this looks like a cemetery for a civilization or something yeah, yeah. Like they there's like the really ancient stuff and then it's a memorial is built around it and those people leave and then another memorial is built around that stuff right <laughs> crazy there's an interesting little, like a notch in the megalithic wall back there too. That didn't mm -hmm. go all the way through. It was just like a small square, you know, may, maybe six inches deep. Yeah. Indentation. Yep. Because the official story is what it's one thousand one hundred A.D. Stack single yep. man. Something like that. And that's yeah. based on pottery and radiocarbon dates. But the With thing pot, is, pot shards. Yep. Finding the paper for this is is difficult. Right. Like, you know, it's, it's mentioned on on Wikipedia. It's mentioned by you know, in news stories by archaeologists, but to find out the actual detail of it is really hard to find. So mm -hmm. I think that needs scrutinizing again because like I said, there's multiple phases of work here. Whether whatever the ages of the actual walls are, you've got right. this well, this stonework, which is protected by the walls, which is definitely older. So I don't know. For me, ne my next stage is to find all the old papers, yeah, read them again, scrutinize them, Put the information out there yep. and and go from there because because i can't be there i'm not being in the field i can see from these videos that it's you know it's, it's, it's a complete mystery but all i can do from sitting like, in england is is read the papers read what's been done already and then yep. try and look at the evidence and go from there so that's kind of what i'm doing now it's trying to find those old papers and read the old writings and and try and build an idea because i just want to solve the mystery even though I'm not going to, I'm not going to solve it, but <laughs> I, I want to solve it <laughs> this year, you know, maybe this month. I do, there you go. <laughs> do, it. do it. Well, your work's amazing. Like that's, and that's a lot of your, I know you've explained this to me in the past, but a lot of your work is, is your thought process. Like you're seeing in a lot of your videos, your, you progressing through the ideas and, and doing research and developing your own ideas and theories. That's, that's awesome. That's I mean, I, you're very dedicated it's like, to it. It's great. It's like, I just want, I'm not saying that I've got all the answers. Everyone else is right. It's like, I'm doing what satisfies my brain. If, right. You know, if, if, if this works for me now, great. But then somebody like, you know, I did a video that I looked at the Sphinx, for example, and the evidence was saying it's this age. And then a geologist emailed me out the blue to say, here's the work that I've just been, do I've just done. Mm. Read it and thought, oh, 
yeah, that changes everything. <laughs> but I'll do a video to say, I've just been pretend this. And so yeah, yeah. the whole channel is the evolution of me. You yeah. know, I started out by reading some Graham Hancock books when I was a teenager and then made a few videos about that. And then I did more and more reading, learning more and more. And I think it's it's it's, it's me evolving. And I've got no idea what I'll think this time next year. You know, yeah. I've got no idea if my mind will change because I found some new bit of information. It's, I want everything to be, 100,000 year old built by hobbits and giants that's what I want everything to be <laughs> and I just want to somehow prove that but yeah you know I, that's that's the idea I'd, I'd love there to be real stargates and aliens and stuff but and that's what right. got me interested because people were saying this is almost possible mm. um but I don't know I, I'm getting a bit more boring as I'm learning more but there's still so many mysteries to unravel so there much are. to learn and yeah, I think following the evidence is the is is the way that it just all I can do yeah. is going to get resolved. Like we just have to follow the evidence wherever it leads, you know. And I've said this before too. If I, I, as I said before, like my position is based on my research and and where I think it lays. But you know, if if getting closer to the truth means that all of those ideas get destroyed, then I'm fine with it. Like I, because yeah. I'm the same. My 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 objective would be to let's get to the truth. I'm not attached to a particular idea one way or the other. I think there's sophisticated... Exactly like, the same, yeah. And my angle is in a lot of cases with that technological aspect to it. And in the stonework, I really enjoy the work of the engineers, Chris Dunn, those kinds of guys. That, And I think there was a spirit of that type of thing was 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 established with Petrie and guys like that. And yeah. I just think it's... In a lot of these cases, I just think our where it leads may not be that... You know, this, this, like you said, this crazy sort of Stargate type thing. But I do think that it's certainly, it's certainly not a version of the past. And what we think about it is just not accurate. This, this primitive culture idea that we seem to have about a lot of these, these, you know, the, the, whether it be at the South American megalithic culture or even the dynastic Egyptians, I just think this, there was something else going on one way or the other. Either we've completely misjudged these civilizations because you just, I just go, I keep ending up at the same place, which is you can't explain the evidence we see in the stonework and the architecture with the tools and techniques that we're attributing to these guys. And, right. you know, it, does, it doesn't line up. And, and, and that's the two things, isn't it? It's, it's finding the evidence of who built it and then yeah. finding the evidence of how they built it. Because whether, right. whether this was built by, the Inca, which we don't think it was, but whether it was, okay, so they did it. We've got evidence, We, you know, they've all of a sudden proved it. We've got no idea how they did it. Right. They didn't have the wheel. They didn't have, you know, Pulse. they were warriors. They weren't you know, expanding Leaders. the empire. They, they haven't got time to build this. They've yeah. got other things to do. It's and the same with like pyramids. Okay, whoever built it, this person built it, but, but how? I've got no idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not pretending to ever get all those answers. Yeah, Yeah, it's almost like we haven't become... A megalithic culture yet yeah i mean right. the, the, the amazing pots yeah i mean in egypt there's those amazing stone pots and the, oh, the, the drill holes and all those things crazy. i've got no idea how they're done and yeah. why would you bother it's like the hardest way of doing something <laughs> yes no that's that's right that and you've got clay use clay <laughs> well that and that's that's the remarkable thing in the, in the egyptian museum you literally see clay pottery in the same case next to these exquisite stone jars made from diorite and you know like come on this is the worlds apart but but we put them they were found in the same place and and we can date the pottery in the pot shards and there boom that's where it comes from i mean little people i think that's important we need we need to understand that side of it the, the pot shards and the oh, for sure. but yeah but it, then it's kind of marrying it up and so it makes sense and it's logical because yeah things like this site you know, I've done all the background reading the last few weeks that it's, you know, the potter is this age and that's all the archaeological evidence that I haven't been able to review yet. Mm. But then when you look around the site like you're showing us now, like that stone there with the little stairs on it and yeah. what is it? It doesn't make any sense. It's a lazy stone. It doesn't stone. fit in any, there's no function to that clearly in my head. You know, it's yep. it's bizarre. What is it? It's, yeah. Uh, MC Escher. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what it makes <laughs> me think of. This is an interesting stone. So we saw we, we we the footage that we were watching while we were talking was what I like to call the little Inca hot tub. There was a real small circle. Um, <laughs> yes, saw yeah, that. we saw that. And then and then this this is in particular a famous stone. This is called the lazy stone. Um, and there's a legend that goes along the lines of they they tried to the Inca tried to move this and uh, and they couldn't or and then or they they 
there's a stone like this, and it, I think there's a legend that said a whole like thousands of Inca were killed when they tried to move it. Like it it, it fell down a oh, hill yeah. and and landed, and supposedly also landed on top of the entrance to a tunnel um, because there's at the backside here they've actually split the rock and they've tried to get access to something underneath it. So this is apparently something. Wow. I, I I don't know if that's true. To me, this almost looks like. I can't tell if this is a natural part of the bedrock and the hill, or if this is actually a giant boulder that's landed here. It's hard, here isn't it? Because you can't see the, the base. Yeah, and you, you typically will get chased away from going over here. We we managed to sneak over here, and you see no end of the Inca terracing too. This is the other remarkable yeah. uh, part about the the Sacred Valley is that, and this is generally all Inca work, probably for agriculture, but they terraced the hell out of that place. Like it's the mountain sides are all terraced. They're super steep. But they made these flat terraces and they grew their crops. They had different um, agricultural zones up and down the hills for you know in different elevations. They grow different crops. They it was and the Inca were it was a remarkable civilization. I mean, they had law and order. They had you know there was equal rights. They treated women well. And no money and no markets. <laughs> no money and no markets. Right. It was just the yeah. It was um, quite astonishing. I'm not you know they. I still I don't think they were capable of doing some of the megalithic stuff that we see, but it was a remarkable mm. civilization nonetheless. Yeah, and again, you when you look at stuff like this, you're like, even if they could, why? What why? <laughs> is that for? You know, it's just hard to understand yeah. what the purpose of that could have been unless it's so old that it's just heavily eroded. Mm. But it's weird because some of the cut areas still have sharp edges in some cases, so it's, uh, right. it's hard to understand what's going on there. Yeah, and here's the backside of this stone where it's been split, and you can kind of see the staircase shape here where it's been yeah. split on the rock, and then there's the other side of it here. This is kind of cracked right open. Um, yeah, that's strange. And you can find this if you go to Saxe Oman and go over the back of the hill and just try and ignore the whistles if they blow it. You go and have a look at it. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I don't want you to go back there, huh? No, this isn't <laughs> kind of part of the park, but this is a. This, I think this is an important piece. And there's and then there, there's a ton of other little uh, sites around here. There's a place called Zone X. That's these cavern systems, but there's a number of these sites that that are down in um, uh, and around Cusco itself. Sorry, I'm dancing around. The footage isn't great, but uh, so the yeah, idea yeah. is that there might be a. That this might be blocking some entrance, and that's to what they were trying to. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to get to, and they they may have hammered this off. See, there's like sharp block blocks lying around on the ground too. Yeah, but it's yeah. these legends and like oral history, which is also important. Not everyone takes it seriously, do they? And if oh, God, the you know, if if it's a legend that there's a cave under there, right, it should be explored. It should be you yeah. know geophysics get in there, check if there is, because that could be right. the answer to it all. It could be yeah. leading down to a hall of information yeah. and whatever you don't know what's you don't know what's in there do you, you don't no. if there's things like that that are still underground still unexplored it's part of the puzzle it's part of the story that we need to it does drive me crazy and investigate yeah it drives me crazy that we don't do more of that in fact i don't have footage of it here there are a few little cavern sections like crawl throughs where you can go through at saxe one one and I, pitch black like there's enough enough corners where you can actually get into an area that's that's pitch black like you can't see mm. your hand in front of your face uh, kind of thing, um, so there's 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 and there's a lot of that going on. I think here. I think there was quite a bit underground, which is yeah, you know, begs begs the question why. There's stra strange cut surfaces on all of these boulders we're looking at. Yeah. You know that in some cases on one side it's just a raw boulder, and then you turn around and then it's been flattened, and there's a couple of sharp shapes cut out of it. It's the Inca thrones, they call them. Yeah. yeah. So what maybe are there these? Was some uh, sort of connection to nature. I don't know. Maybe there was. Sorry. Maybe there was. They did believe in some sort of connection to nature, where they, I don't know, had to keep it looking naturalistic. I don't know. Just mm. another idea. Yeah, could just be a, in other words, a style preference or something. Yeah. I was going to ask Ben what what do these caves look like? Are they cut or are they natural caves or what? What are we talking about here? They do look like they've been worked in areas. Yes, um, here's, we're back at the Inca, the Inca hot tub here. Um, maybe we saw this little clip earlier, but yeah, there's there's a lot of them. I think are probably natural. They started that way, and then you do you do see like worked surfaces in there. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and and uh, Kenko, which I think we looked at briefly in the break, is another site that we can we can take a close look at. It's another one around Cusco. Um, has a lot of walkthroughs and and passages that you can go through that are similar to those caves, although they're, they're kind of open to the sky now. They're, it's one of those spaces where there probably was a roof. Uh, but it's a combination, I think. You've got... It, it is very flowing and, and organic in some way. Like, as you said, it's it does... You get lost when you're in there. Do you know where you are? <laughs> you just kind of... <laughs> in some spots, you can, yeah. Um I've got so, no idea where I am watching this. And I've sorry. looked at so yeah, many pictures over the last few weeks. There's your <laughs> extruded rock at the back here. This is like over the backside here is, is Saxe Huaman, the, the zigzag walls over this hill. And we're about done with Saxe Huaman mm-hmm. here. And and then we're, we're yep. walking out. And then towards the left end of it, you can see the big uh, Jeebus statue uh, over Cusco. And then actually some of these caves are in this area down in here. Uh, you can walk through sort of takes you through some of this bedrocky type stuff and then you've got more of these yeah. what it, what was obviously buildings on the ground um you know at some point there was probably these were probably much taller a lot of this stone's yeah. probably been quarried and taken away yeah yeah so we're gonna go look at cusco we take a break and do that uh so yeah later. if you want to take another break we can i think next is cusco yes we'll do cusco right. and yeah we'll get into it then yeah cool. right, let's take a break and then go to cusco and we are back, third segment with uh, Ben and Matt, and I think we're going to be looking at the at Cusco and maybe some of the Coricancha. Right? We are, yes. So we've we've gone from Saxe Huaman, and now what I wanted, what I've lined up here, I I don't have. We could spend an hour, a couple of hours, probably talking about the Coricancha, but what I wanted to look at was kind of the outside wall of it because this forms okay. part of the streets of Cusco. Which, as we said, I said before, you know, pretty much is this megalithic city that has a lot of megalithic origins to it. And we'll also get to look at, you know, the Inca Roca Wall and the, the real famous um, parts of it. But what is interesting about the the walls of the Coricancha, which is what we're seeing here, and I'll hit this as we go, is it's it's a different style. It's it's this almost linear architecture, but you still have vitrified stone. You still have nubs if you look up high on the wall. It's, but it's not quite straight. And that's what's what's quite remarkable about this, the walls of the Coricancha to me. Again, mortalist stone. You have those same holes through some parts of the stone here that we saw at, at Saxe Waman. But when you get up close and you look at the precision of the joinery, the fact that it isn't straight is what's remarkable. Like this isn't cast. Like this would be another, some people might suggest geopolymer, but it's every stone slightly different. And, and some of the joinery is just kind of remarkable. Um, I was about to say, way. it's like, this sort of, this wall looks like it's been built to have a be- to have a better finish on purpose, but then you see the nubs again, which makes it look unfinished. You know, I know it's right. people yeah. believe that they're for a reason, but if you think this was wall was meant to look beautiful and flat, you just knock those bits off because it they stick out and it looks weird. Right. I don't know. It's compared to the other walls in Cusco, this looks more uniform, more I don't know, regal, more. Yep. Yeah, it's so for a purpose. It's so close to uniform that if yeah, they would have gone all the way uniform, it would have been really easy to build. But yeah. they're slightly not uniform. Made it harder for themselves. <laughs> it makes it way yeah, harder yeah. to put together. Yeah. So finally. Let me just do – I'll add a little more here because I just wanted to take a close look at these joints. I know I did in this video. It's, it's – and they're very fine look work. It, it's so tight but also so not regular, like look not straight. Like these curves and, and you have to – you know, you've got you've – got, at least two stones involved in this. And then later on, we'll see examples of there's a one famous stone in the Inca Roca wall called the 12 sided stone that has 12 sides. that meets 12 other stones and it's just all perfect. Like that's There is, you can, I can just only speculate as to how this may have been done. It, and it's literally, I, I hate saying it because it's, I can't explain how this happened. And there's certainly nothing evidence. We don't understand how this, but it's, as to me, it's almost as if the stone was like toffee or, and it was shaped and it's been mashed together because yeah. I have real trouble believing that this was done with hammers and chisel and you keep putting a stone in and out and try to, until you get that f- perfect surface because perfect. Yeah. you run into that same problem you see in some of the Egyptian things. is like at some point in a reductive process, if you take too much out, you're hosed. You're just hosed. Yeah, you, you, you start you, over. You've yeah. got to start over entirely and you just don't ever see this ever, any examples of that. The, this isn't like earthquake proof. Yeah, it would have been easy just to make that flat you know get get your 
get whatever it is tool you're using and just flatten it off so so you know it's, it's, they're not right. trying to make an earthquake proof wall so there's no point in making it harder i don't get it yeah and it's yeah like so for, for people who are listening the joint spinner showing us is like there's a stone <laughs> and then there's a join in the middle of that stone at the top and the stone on the left is a little bit set down farther in the stone <laughs> that it's sitting on than the stone on the right of the joint it's it's like they had to custom make every join yep and every fitting oh, and yeah. every block is is they're very square and regular but every block is slightly different and then all the joints are slightly different so that everything is basically custom there's no it's it's so close to being regular but it's not quite which makes it right. way harder right. than it needs to be it's it's very yeah. interesting. do you ben do you know what kind of stone this is again this is a uh... uh, I think so a lot of the stuff in Cusco is some form of granite from what I understand like there's definitely okay. andesite in the Coricancha and there's some of the the Inca Roca walls that are a form of granite from what I understand it's a different color granite than what you see in Egypt but it's very hard stone um but and the yeah, interesting this... thing is people say that the that where where they where the rocks join the actual rock goes finer grained which is why some people right. think it has been melted, vitrified, because it's recrystallized right. at a small grain. So obviously, if you, you can't melt granite and recrystallize granite, it'll it'll be a much much smaller grain size and much more crystal, smaller crystal size. Right. And because the crystal size is smaller at the joints, makes people think that, or some people think that it's been melted. it has undergone some sort of acid melting or heat melting of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, and it's apparently you can see it, but again, I can't. I don't know that looking at it real close up, but apparently right. the grain size is it gets smaller. smaller. And 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 as far as tool marks go, like we definitely see like this hammering. It looks to me like there's hammering tool marks on a lot of this stuff, but then that gets smaller and finer until it even just disappears on the joins. So it's yeah, mm. it's it's not only maybe the crystal size gets smaller, it's like what however it was shaped or if it was even shaped with a hand tool or or with a tool, that process got finer and finer the closer to the joinery you get. And yeah, I, I'd love to see an analysis on that crystal size and, and the actual mated surfaces. We'll get a closer look at these surfaces at another wall here, uh, the Inca Roca wall. But I like this example too. Like this is one of the alleyways. Coricanch is on the left and you've got a, That's amazing. an Inca wall on the right. And then you've got a modern plastered wall on top of that that may be covered up colonial stuff or something. You just, you have this real, you know, mix of different styles of architecture that's, it's, and you just it's a working living city that you know it's just a it's uh, it's such a fun place to visit and it is a good example of a the... block in the wall that's probably been repurposed oh uh, yeah yeah you know to think that the the way to to build a wall like that is to have a machine that both scans the surface and then cuts uh the the negative on the next block right like like we use lidar Mm -hmm. and we can scan that surface and get a 3d image of all of the contours of of a surface and then you have a machine that actually cuts that the opposite of that contour and then you set the block on it and then you scan the new surface of the block that you just made and put right. the, you see what i'm saying That's, yeah yeah, it, yeah. It, it, each it, one has to be done yeah individually precisely yeah. Yeah. every every face yeah. yeah every block is looked individually it's set perfectly in its own little slots and then the next yep. one next to it is you know we, we do a brick wall in this country you know it's one brick next brick next brick it's like this one is is that block perfect yep then we yep. go to the next one it's, it's really strange it's, because it's the contact surfaces that how perfect they all are or, or different they all are it, right and how non-regular they are that's what's amazing to me and in fact if when we do on a future episode, get inside the Coricancha this is the outside there's there's a good example in there of where they've actually the Spanish had broken apart a megalithic wall so you can actually you, you can trace all the way through the thickness of the block the joinery between these two massive pieces and the inside's mind-blowing like there's there's pieces that are like massively three to three dimensional with all sorts of corners in a single block but you can trace where this wall's been broken like you can't even see the join like between the stones but it's there mm. it's per it's perfectly flat and this is on a this wouldn't have mattered. Like never, you're never meant to see these joins. It's you know, it's one thing to make the the outside look clean, but but that's a precise join and a precise mating surface all the way through the stone, uh, and that's I something. Think we, some sort of heat was applied, but it's some. I don't know. I just something the to, way it looks. I think some sort of heat must have been applied. And like I think I mentioned to you the, the other day, I, yeah. reading about those um, 
Iron Age forts that have been vitrified across Europe, Mm -hmm. which they say was done, you know, by people setting them on fire, you know, during the Iron Age. And the temperatures reached such a high temperature because of the way they're actually the wooden structures and thatch was built. And also the way that the, uh, what's it called? The ash makes a temper. It lands on the rock. So it lowers the, the, you know, melting point. Mm -hmm. And actually you've got basalt, which is melted and completely reformed Right. As, new, as new basalt That's and you right. think platonic it was done by accident and it looks horrible and rough and thing like this but if there's a technique there that you could actually harness and you know control maybe you could do something like this i don't know mm. um i just quickly want to make this point about this too with the coricancha here is is that you can see the repurposed megalithic blocks here with the cement this was done by the spanish yeah. so the colonial yeah. spanish could use cement and these are repurposed megalithic blocks in the construction of the Coricancha. You can see it all over the place where they'd run out of material and they've gone to the rougher stones that they'd found lying around to build stuff. Um, a real mix of styles in here. And we'll, uh, let me go Incredible, back to man. go back to this uh, imagery here. And I think we will see a similar thing. If you zoom in, this is not the Cori- This is the Coricancha, actually. This is another corner of it. Um, you can see the different styles in the stonework just oh, yeah. in the different layers. So a lot of this stone uh, has come from Saxe Huaman. A lot of this stone has come from the megalithic sites, uh, was all used in, in the purpose of building it. And then there's the, the other the other part of the Coricancha that's interesting is the outside. Wow. Another part of the outside wall, right? Yeah, this is the, the real famous back corner of it. This is, I think, part of the original megalithic construction. And Look how on, polished and how dark it is, though. It's just... yeah. There's, I don't know if this haunting is haunting almost, isn't it? Almost yeah. looks haunting. Something yes. unbelievable about it. Super precise work. It's it's just um Yeah. And and in fact the inside part of this is is you get on the inside of this wall and you can see the inside part of it. It's full of nubs and and, and things like that. And then the last mm-hmm. bit of the Coricancha I wanted to show before we move on to the streets of Cusco here. It's kind of a look around at the back that's that's in this garden as you come out the back of the Coricancha. And you, again, you just see this collection of the different shapes. And, oh, and yeah. we'll get into it in, in the Coricancha. There's a lot of these, there's tube drills. There's all sorts of like, almost like, looks like imprinted circuitry almost in some of the stones in the Coricancha. There's a lot to that place, which is why I want to dedicate some more time to it individually. Um, it's It was kind of like the center of Cusco. This was the... I think this was the the real profound center of this megalithic city was the Coricancha, and yeah, it's some of the, it's it's got a like an almost a different level of work to it with some really interesting and and very complicated bits of stonework and you can kind of see how it's this hodgepodge of construction that's happened over centuries um, that starts with megalithic and builds up from there with Inca and then colonial and then modern, um, but it's a beautiful spot to visit today they kind of have this graveyard of these bits and pieces. It's like, figure it out. There's, there's all this stuff lying around <laughs> everywhere. Little clues um, for you. Yeah. There's actually a little museum over here nearby that has one of the elongated skull, um, like a little baby kind of elongated uh-huh. skull person there. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, just the juxtaposition of styles right there. You've, you know, <laughs> modern. Incredible with the white buildings, yeah. Yep, yep. Colonial. Yeah, Cusco, like, you know, it's, you can't beat the pyramids and, and the size and scope of Egypt, but there's something about South America and Peru that um, it's everywhere. You know, that sites are great and the whole experience, just in Cusco, you're just, you're staying in a place that has these roots. It's, I think it's tremendously ancient. Uh, and I think we're going to move here to the classic Inca Roca. And I, I also agree with Matt that there's something haunting, which is the word he used. There's something haunting about it, mm. because, and it may be in part because we have so little information. Yep. But yep. it's also that the work is just, it's, it's incomprehensible. It just doesn't, it, do, it doesn't make sense on so many levels. Because and whoever built it, whether whether it's, but it's five hundred years old or ten thousand years old. Yeah. Why? Why bother building a wall in a in a city like this? <laughs> why? Yeah. Why bother? What's you know? I don't know. It just doesn't make any sort of logic logical sense. I mean, I know there's yeah. earthquakes and stuff in the region, but 
why aren't all the walls earthquake proof? Right. If that's the case, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, and 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 the skill, like that, that, and why are they pillowed out? So why yeah, are these pillows sort of? They're pillowed, but in that, and then you showed us that curved corner, that's mm -hmm. just freaking. It's just a beautiful <laughs> flat, you know. And you're just like, okay, whoever did this was a master at yeah. working in stone. And they could clearly pretty much do whatever they wanted with it. And so you have to ask, you know, well, what were they doing and why and what was their mindset? And that's part of what makes it haunting, like you said, because it's just you, yeah. you look. And at even it. if they did use copper tools and chisels and they rub the stones back and forth. OK, it's working out how long that would take, how many yeah. people you would need to do that. And have you got those resources when you're going to need to do farming, agriculture, defend yourself, you know, train people, <laughs> arm yourself? Have you, have you got the time to build the wall in this style if that was how it was done? You think, I don't know, was it, it was quite tribal, wasn't it, through the Inca mm -hmm. and pre, you know, just before the, pre, the Inca times? It, was, yep. it wasn't a very safe and secure place. It wasn't like there was one culture that dominated. It was a mess by all accounts. So, right. It's a thing against to say it was done by a directly pre-Inca pre culture was yeah. because there wasn't a level of cohesion in society to actually achieve this sort of work. It needs lots of people coming together, working together as an organized society to lay out jobs, you know, agriculture, feeding right. these workers that are doing this. It and needs civilization. By all accounts, it didn't exist. It yeah. didn't, there was no central power until the Inca came in and there was a central power. Yes, that's right, and and I I think personally, my opinion is that there's, whereas in Egypt you have this continuation as almost a direct connection between I think the Egyptian culture and what they would call their ancestors and the builder culture, if you like. But it seems to me in South America there's almost like a bigger gap. Like there's something had the megalithic culture that built this. I my feeling is is that there's a a a bigger gap that, it, that there was nothing. It was like it was abandoned, disappeared for yeah. whatever reason, wiped away. Maybe it was cataclysm. Maybe it was something else. But then, yeah. then you had later cultures like the the Wari or and the Kilki or and 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 perhaps the, then the Inca would come along and they they didn't have the same connection to their past in the way that you have with the say the Egyptian culture where they talk about Zeptepi and the Shemsukhor and stuff. It's just a bigger gap here, from in my mind, in South America. Yeah, well, you, what you have is the, like the legends of Viracocha, right? Yeah, that he yeah. shows up yeah. and people were living in caves, didn't know how to speak anymore, had forgotten right. about clothes, and were eating and he, each other. And yeah, and he has to teach them how to talk and how to farm and how to build and, and lore that's, and all that. And that's supposed to, you know, in in those myths, it comes from the depths of antiquity. I mean, they, you know, they they explain mm -hmm. it as being this was, you know, before everything this was the beginning of everything so it's, yep. and yet you Less, still get this yeah. you still get this hint that they had fallen to that state and he had to come and teach them how to be what they were before that right so it's right. almost like you still get the three stages in, uh in, implied in the myth i don't know if that's really what they're saying but you still get this idea that that they had because they're saying they forgot how to speak and you're like okay well will you if you forgot that means you used to know which means you fell to this completely almost animalistic place and then had to be taught again by by Viracocha or the Viracochas. So unless this was easy for them, they just knew something that we don't. Yeah. They knew how to make this wall pretty easily. They had the technology, they had the know-how that we just can't fathom because we don't know how they did it. Maybe there is a way that they people could could do it somehow. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, it, I think, almost, there, option, almost, it? there almost yeah. has to be into my mind. That's when I was talking yeah. about the toffee-like substance. It's like, I just, I don't, I can't explain it. I don't understand any, I just, it's just an intuition that's, I think it feels like that's the way you would do this. If you could shape, if you could change the consistency of the stone and maybe that almost explains some of the nubs too, in some ways, like if you could imagine it setting and and the scoop marks and you had to like press something like wood and scaffolding into yes. it to to hold it there and then it would set and that's what formed these these perfect inside surfaces because to me the idea of doing this with hammers and chisels and to to get the perfect nature of these inside joins and we're going to see yeah. that here around this corner because this you will get a closer look at these lips that are on these joins and then the interior joint surfaces because this wall has 
you know, it's been shifted and fallen apart and there's a bunch of blocks where they don't have neighbors, but we can see the joining surfaces. And and that's where just my mind is blown when looking at this because it's incredibly sharp. The, the edges are sharp. They're very flat. As you said, no tool marks on it. You, you know, you, you just can't... I don't understand how... Wow. You do that by hand, and it's such a well def- relative to the the pillow shape and everything else. There's that perfect lip of where these stones were touching, almost as if mm. they were soft, and then they form that way. Like uh, it'd be good to sort of scan the surfaces with like a electron microscope yeah. and see if there's imperfections in the protruding bits on one side and the you know to see if they were pressed together somehow. Right. So you could actually see if that surface is imprinted onto that surface and on a fine scale. I don't know. That's one way of maybe doing that and and seeing if there's anything in it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the nubs uh, were maybe where they um, pressed a tool that caused the surface to, you know, I don't know, become molten. <laughs> maybe. Know, it just yeah, seems yeah. like the you know the nubs are like the result of say removing the tool yeah, or something, the tool and they're out. just kind of they just. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're always on the bottom, or pretty much on the bottom, aren't they? They're on, yeah. on the blocks. They're not at the top of the blocks. So they're always at the bottom, and the, in in this region. Yeah, you and that's it. why you know people with the that talk about geopolymers think they were injection sites. You know. That's, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? They look like tool marks. Yeah. To me, mm. I mean, it's it's so. I don't know. This, just... this, yeah, this this kills me. This this like this inside join here, where there's a lip that oh, yeah. consistently runs across three or four blocks, right? Yeah. There, there was a piece here, and you just see this everywhere where these join where these blocks <laughs> were touching, and it's a curved surface. Like there's nothing it's linear perfect, about it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I don't understand it. I, I, it's it is kind That's of that's a hard but igneous rock, which is not this, easy to. It's like to granite. Carve. Granite or diorite, I think yeah. some of these Inca Roca walls. Very, very hard rock to work uh, by hand. So this part of the wall, it's like time. you can tell that it's been rebuilt. There's like mortar or something in between some of the blocks. Yeah. Like yeah. Fell down and they tried to use the rubble to rebuild it, but they didn't know how to put the pieces back together. That's right. Yeah. It's in def- some cases, they found, ah, okay, this block cracked in half, so stick those together, but they couldn't find where it was supposed to match with other ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is- yeah and what caused that to happen? I yes. Wonder. Right. What, what knocked these walls down? That, that's the other... Yeah aspect that you see in a lot of these sites is there's evidence of cataclysmic damage and you know and it's it can't all be that's the like Spanish. me trying to fix a wall that is <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what i do <laughs> yeah. and that's that's the she funny thing about good. it <laughs> but that's the funny thing about it that's what we do today we use mortar yeah. we use less precise techniques than what the ancients did in a lot of ways you know we we use mortar <laughs> yeah. and it's 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 that's one of the aspects to it that are always really I think drives the point home. It's same thing in Egypt, like with Petri and the, the the drill holes and stuff. We didn't develop the technology to be even able to understand what we're seeing from a manufacturing perspective until like the 18th century, like late 18th, early 19th century. Like that's that's astounding to me that, that we couldn't yeah, yeah. put any of this stuff into context in Egypt. And it's a similar thing here. It's we just you know it's it's there's such a Obviously, some there's some high form of technology in the past, and then there's been such a long dip for thousands of years, and we're coming out of it now. And it's like, no, no, it was fine. It was done by hand. They can't possibly have had any technology in the past. I'm like, I think the evidence that we look at is is it begs to differ. Um, the face, fast, the base fast, of that cool. wall Sorry. is a bit weird, though. The know? face, mm. yeah, the base yeah. at yeah. the bottom of the where we were looking earlier. It looked a lot yeah. rougher than. Uh, well, not yeah. here. That looks yeah. That it looks, looks like they good. rebuilt that. Well, I think whole... I think I, yeah. That's yeah. I think over you're... there, you can see like there's like cobbles and pebbles at the base yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm sure it's been rebuilt. Yeah, I'm sure they, yeah. if the if not yeah. the Inca, then even modern. I'm sure some of this has been put back together yeah. with just yeah. pushing this. Because well, yeah, I mean, once you figure out, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, I guess. When you put it back together, it probably fits yeah. pretty well. And then parts of it, are, are, I think, are still standing. And original. I love the way the course lines look going across that wall down the whole length of it. Mm-hmm. Just how jagged it is. But yeah. they're continuous, right? Yeah, you there can are see courses. that course. Yeah. It's incredibly jagged, but uh, I think there's a video I saw recently on YouTube where somebody made a scale model of either this wall or Saxe Woman. Yeah. And um just like small little blocks and they put it all together and then they moved the the whole the wall, thing. Yeah, moved it around and it just wouldn't fall over 
mm-hmm. like even like quite moved it quite a lot and it wouldn't walk, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't fall over at all vibrated it wouldn't budge so it's so incredibly brilliant the way it's done it's yeah, solid, right? It should, it should stay there forever. Yeah. 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 Which again makes you wonder how did that wall collapse? What caused that? That must have been pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing you wonder is because it, it, it looks. Oh, wow. Look at that. It looks like, uh, I mean, when you're just looking at it, you're like, it's random. You know, like they were just fitting randomly, they're fitting each block. But did, but, but you have Was to it? wonder <laughs> did they actually sit down and design the entire thing? Mm. And all those shapes have a reason. You know, there's a reason they're shaped that way, and it's not just whimsical. Like, was it was each shape purposeful? In other words, like, right. yeah. So they set down to they set out to to create that wall in every individual block for a purpose, and that's why they look that way, not because they were just randomly randomly block done. Shapes and fitting them. Yeah, yeah. I I can't imagine. Yeah, it's it's one of those things which is like making the pyramid up as you go along. Similar thing here. I think it must have have yeah. there must have been a plan. Like a lot of this, yeah, I don't know if you can achieve it just by making it up whimsically. So right. to, to and and therefore therefore was there a function like maybe it was specifically for solidity or to hold it together and and if that's the case was there some computer that was modeling this before they did it that kind of gave them the the plan I I don't yeah. know and where's mm. all the dust from grinding those stones down I mean <laughs> yeah. God that would have been a yeah. that's a good point uh, it would have been a lot of mess here's here's another example of the types of architects you see around Cusco and this is similar to some of the Coricancha stuff where it is quite st- like straight and regular, but just again yeah. some astonishing different shapes in the stone, and just, it, you know, and you also have the iconography on a lot of these with snakes uh, on the lintel block. You know, it's this. And there's a purpose for that, isn't it? There's a purpose. That's the reason why that's there. Yeah, it's not an accident. They've, they've included that little sculpture on the right because is that high relief. Yeah. Ben? Yep. Yeah. It is hard, hard to do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, hard. Yeah, right. Hard to do. Um, and who knows if this was even Inca maybe could have shaped the block, put that in there. Don't know. Like mm-hmm. it just, there's a, there definitely the Inca did work on some stuff. Um, and we'll see an example of that when we get to Brian in a minute. But I'd say that the blocks above it look like those were added, but everything below has the same sort the of same. color. I don't, yeah, yep. I don't know. Wow. It's, and it all melds into the street. Um, yeah. So there's a closer look at this crazy little wow. zigzag pattern in the stone you know that you see in there there's like it's amazing this place too you go there's some restaurants you go into that have a big megalithic wall in the restaurant like it's just part of the the structure and they, they've kept it they've exposed it and it's just you know it, this i was just showing off right yeah was like, yeah that mason he was just ah look at this yeah, he was like, yeah all figure right, this one this out. out i'll put a little <laughs> put a little little round nub here for you guys to figure yeah. out in a thousand years there's, there's one just, on yeah. just to wind us up yeah just to wind us up just to wind us up yeah figure it out guys what's the purpose there's no purpose at all we just did it just for fun <laughs> yeah we'll put some snakes on this one <laughs> there you yeah. go there's there's a block for you guys right the, yeah i know snake I box. snakes snakes <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sit there. laughs> But man, I tell you what, if if I could build walls like that, every wall I build would look, yep. look like, like that. that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I've said about the, the geopolymer idea. I'm like, man, if you could just if we could do that easily with geopolymer, then whoever figures out that formula stands to make a fortune in landscaping. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> like, Government contracts. <laughs> yeah. So here's a, this is like just wandering around the street at night and, you know, stuff like this. This is just hanging, a piece hanging out. And this is like it goes back into this area and into this restaurant and building. It's just oh, left yeah. leftover megalithic blocks. Um, With the inset. Wow. Like, yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Just stuff like this floating around on street corners. Um, there's a tremendous amount of it. Like there's there's obviously the real famous spots of it, but you find this stuff really everywhere. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. the nub below it lasts like two eyes almost below. Yep, right. Strange. Very odd. Um more snakes more and snakes. like crazy uh like angles to this, like little blocks that have been cut into the corners of that bigger one and then a nice curved mm-hmm. surface here for some like curved corner. Yeah, yeah. I mean whimsical is the right word, another weird like oh, wow. lent, yeah, like way. a key key lock kind of block. That's also, as human or like a triangular head and four limbs. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, it is kind of, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you could yeah. p- make that. A, that's the head, and then that's the, the body. Um, Mind plays tricks. Who knows? It does. <laughs> yep. 
little doorways and gardens, little courtyards. And so, you know, there's an interesting, and we get into this with talking to Brian Forrester about, about this stuff. You tend to, there were a lot of megalithic courtyards and, and it, we sort of talk about it in one of the videos, but it's almost proof that, that the Inca didn't build everything because it's only the first, uh, I think I forget the actual number of, of Inca rulers they all rebuilt megalithic courtyards for themselves. So every time there was a change of, of ruler, they would create a new palace, a new courtyard, and started with Manco Capac, who was the first guy. And they would progressively, like the first nine of them or whatever, they would progressively rebuild these megalithic courtyards and call it their own place. And then it, the rulers after that, there was no more megalithic courtyards to rebuild. So they would, all of the palaces after a certain number of the Inca rulers, the guys who came later, would would have these places built out of the little local stone in that rough local style. And it, the empire didn't last that long. You know, you're talking like 150, mm. 200 years. So it's it's hard to imagine that they both then immediately developed the technology to build megalithic stuff and then lost that capability within a couple of generations uh, or just one generation between different kings. It's, it's a pretty clear indication they were rebuilding older megalithic stuff and then they just ran out of megalithic sites to rebuild in Cusco. So the last few, you know, uh, high Incas, when they built their palaces, they were just made from the little local stones in that rough sort yeah. of typical Inca style. Just a good yeah. indication that... Makes sense. And there were nine, there's nine megalithic gardens. I think something there. like that. Yeah, it's it's in my video with Brian. Um, uh, one of the one of the videos with him, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll throw a link in down below in the description for people that want to look that up. But... Um, Kind of the last thing that I have here on video, and this is a nice section we can sit back and watch it. It's a segment from a, a long interview that we did with Brian Forrest, I think 2015 or 16. And this was like the walk and talk at the end of it. And and my point with this was to connect it back to Saxay Huaman to show that that originally did flow all the way down the hill, down in the down into Cusco, probably all the way to the Coricancha originally. Like that, I think that was the scope of the original megalithic construction here. And uh, this is up in the in the hillsides of Cusco, on the way up to Saxe Huaman, and it's basically a big chunk. We'll get to this part where it's more or less a big chunk of a wall like Saxe Huaman or or like the Coricancha, and it's just I think it's just a clear indication. And you see these all over the place randomly of what's left that this this, this once was a much more massive um, megalithic site. Like there was, I think, that just tremendously more stone and and more building here than 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 is left today uh the scope of it was huge so well we we've uh we've done another 30 minute segment so do you want to do this after the break yeah let's we maybe yeah. we'll do let's do that we'll finish with uh we'll do uh we'll finish with this brian forrester thing and then we can wrap after that all right excellent all right we're back for the final segment here uh we're going to look at more of the cory concha is that right or we're we done with that uh, done well. Yes, we we will definitely look at the Coricancha in another episode. I'll take a closer look at it. But this is that this is the segment of a wall that is sort of halfway between Cusco and and Saxe Huaman. So I think it's it sort of shows the continuity of what was the original right. megalithic construction here. Um, and and I'll set this up because we can listen to this. And this was um, uh, part of an interview we, we did a uh, long sit down with Brian Forrester. Very, he spent an afternoon with us. It's uh, me in the shot, my buddy Luke. And uh, this, this was just a little walk and talk. We were up in the area of what is known as uh, the plaza of the San Cristobal Plaza. It's up in the hills because Cusco's in this big bowl. And this is kind of halfway up one of the slopes towards Saxe Huaman. So, kind of the hill mm. on the top left of the screen here is, is at the top of that is where Saxe Huaman is. And and you'll see there's megalithic construction all the way down the hill into the city. You know, like I said, I think originally there was a lot more of it, and I think that's it. It got knocked around and destroyed, and then recycled and repurposed as the Inca and Manco Capac would build his palace. And in fact, this where we're going was originally was Manco Capac's uh, palace and his estate. So this is part of the area that was rebuilt. But you get some good examples, and it's nice we sit back, let Brian uh, chitty chat, and, and sort of show you a couple of. Uh, a couple of things there because you know he he's a real expert down he's lived down in peru for a long yeah. time now um so you're know, wandering around peru with him he kind of knows a, a lot of the nooks and crannies that you can get into and this isn't actually a public area i'm pretty sure it's just a private like boarding house and we just sort of snuck up in there and there wasn't anyone around and took a look at the wall you know uh it's an interesting little spot so tell me you, you guys should be able to hear this 
uh, when we hit play. Yep. All of a sudden, all the fence is gone. So you can see that Soxie one man right there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So originally, Soxie one man went from the top all the way down to the city. And that's why we find bits and pieces of it. Get us all breathing hard on. <laughs> yeah. Care. I'm used to it now. <laughs> In a month up here, in the altitude. Yeah, it is, like I said, 11,500 feet. Oh, Lake, so. I still find Lake Titicaca a pain in the ass. Though. Yeah. Oh, oh. I had a couple hard days in tune up for sure. Yeah. The air is definitely thin up there. Yeah, Lake Titicaca is like 13,000, 12,500. Yeah. Way up there. I certainly haven't been chewing it, man. Coca leaves this summer. <laughs> Chews like crazy the last time. Yeah, the first two weeks I was chugging mm -hmm. WT for sure. There's a, a dog bark Chew coming up here. Goes it's going to be a little loud. <laughs> Lucky he wasn't out attacking us. Oh, oh good, the dog's out. Crank up the compression. The dog used to be in here. Oh. Yeah. That's good. But this, is where, this is where you'll see. Like, this is transition. Right. Oh, well, forget that. But there, see, right there. Yeah, yeah. They said go to Yelp. This is obvious. Right. Underneath, this is basalt, again, from a quarry 50 kilometers away. Right. On top of it is Inca construction. Right. Because the Spanish knew what concrete was. As soon as they came here, they found sources of, of materials to make concrete. And so they would have used concrete. But the Inca, in this case, uh, this may not have been super significant to the Inca. That's why they didn't do nice, tight work. But you have the difference. Andesite, local, basalt, from a great distance. Strange depressions, and sometimes protrusions. Here's one of the, here's a classic knob type thing. You can see it could, you could lash, or put a rope under here to help lift it. The problem is, it's not in the center. So since it's not in the center, it would go that way. Yeah. So it had to, and this one here, another one. Yeah. And that's the sort of, I mean, that's just everywhere now. You can just, uh, that block, Cusco, up down. Yeah. And this is, looks like, I mean, is this Inca wall? Is this yeah, Inca wall? this is Inca. Because yeah. these blocks here have been repurposed, right? Yeah, well... Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There's, oh, yeah. The, there's the Cory Tancher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I think... One ass. One ass. Got there. And... I guess. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak up there. It, it, I'll just say it also is just I love the, the ambient sound too like the birds chirping it's just yeah, a beautiful yeah. area like it's such a lovely spot but yeah. uh, we'll let him let him keep going here colonial Spanish with concrete and then megalithic wow this is amazing huh? yeah you know what's So it's a, just for a description of people listening, this is, we're in a courtyard up near a little guest house and there's just a big section of wall just like what you find in the Coricancha. It's these, it's a megalithic wall, no joinery, just this perfect big chunk of it that's just sort of in somebody's backyard halfway up the hill to Sacsayhuaman. So this, this effect here on these two stones? Yeah. What's going on there? Is that just age or are we talking about some kind of vitrification or 
we're talking the possibility that this is catastrophic damage. It's not damage from stones being on top of it, but our theory is that in Egypt and here, and in a few parts of other parts of the world, that there was um, the civilization that did this work did so more than 12,000 years ago. The way we date that is the fact that there was a, a, a global catastrophe that happened approximately 12,000 years ago. It came from space. It could have been uh, plasma ejection from the sun, according to Robert Schock, or it could have been um, em the emission of lethal energy from uh, the center of our galaxy, which Paul de La Violette believes, who's a physicist, uh, he believes that the center of, of our galaxy is not a black hole, but is a pulsar. So every, approximately every half processional cycle, which is 13,000 years, more or less, it emits energy, which is lethal, which moves across the galactic plane, creating things like um, disturbing small planets, um, catching comets and altering their course. So it could be that a comet did this. Um, and so there was, uh, especially at high altitude as well, like here, uh, that this disturbance was so profound that this could be the damage from that 12,000 year old um, catastrophic event, which would have wiped out whoever was here. And obviously, Kumapunku um, was hit pretty hard by yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. And the latest theory about that is that actually the, the volcano where the gray um, andesite comes from, that its last eruption may have been about the same time. It might have been triggered by the, by the cataclysmic event because that was when the ice age ended. And um, according to Robert Schock, the melting that happened of the poles that caused the water of the oceans to rise by 300 plus feet could have taken place in less than two weeks because it wouldn't have been the melting of the poles. It would have been the vaporization um, of ice going into the atmosphere, supersaturating it, and then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, or whatever you want to say, causing the rising of sea level. Um, and that could also have uh, resulted in our planet going from being vertical to 23 and a half degrees because Uranus is rotating like this. And the universe wasn't, you know, wasn't set up catastrophically or you know, like in a weird way like that. Something obviously happened. So yeah. that's, I think that's what we're looking at. And there's lots of evidence of this in Egypt. Yes. And Machu Picchu, there was a, you know, <coughs> there, well, something pulled those stones apart. That's the only damage I've, like structural damage I've really significant that I've seen to any of these that still standing, like in more or less in one piece. That's the only piece that seems like it's, you know, really damaged. Radically shifted. Yeah. I mean, right. So much of this stuff is still perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was built so well that it is, it, you know, it is, it's earthquake proof, but it's not catastrophic earthquake proof. Right. And so that would have been a one-time event. And again, <clears throat> the Inca likely found this the way it is and uh, didn't touch it but they would have used the stone that had fallen down and recycled it to rebuild um, what was uh, Manco Capac's palace. That we, we, we see that at Sasquatch as well, right? When they may rebuild the walls and backfill them with some of the actual shaped blocks. Like the exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know, it's, it's obvious in many of the streets of Cusco, you'll see a complete um, andesite wall with this rectangular block of basalt stuck into it and that isn't because it's artistic or because it's for strength it's because it was lying on the ground and why not use it and we'll see more this is all Manco Calpex palace I think this is half of a frog this is Inca but this is Inca reusing the basalt and you see if this is the quality of Inca craftsmanship that's much, much better. If this was all by, done by the same masons, this would be far more refined. Um, but it's not. Because this, is, this was shaped using probably meteorite iron. I guess this is one of the greatest similarities between South America and Egypt is that the early 
stuff. It's the oldest stuff is the best stuff. It has the best work going on. Right. Except the harder stone. Yeah, and the same in Turkey and Italy. Uh, the Parthenon in Greece is built on top of a megalithic structure. Those were the go that was done by the gods. The Titans were not a story. The Titans were people, but the Titans got wiped out. And then came their descendants, the Greeks, who stole all their information from the Egyptians. And the Egypt all the in Egyptian information comes from people before, too. Yeah, the Comitians or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Little clip. And Let's yeah, that, when you guys went around the corner of that, it, and Kyle, Kyle was mentioning this before we even started the show, but the damage on that block, it looks like there's like a sphere inside of what they, it's like, it's, there's some kind of spherical shape that's inside of what they turned into a block. Like they pasted something. I don't know. It's I, hard I, to describe. I think that's yeah. because of the, the crystalline structure of the basalt. Yeah, probably right. Pretty sure. Yeah. There's two blocks next to each other, weren't they? It was just like yes. two blocks and the wall was fine, but not just there. It's really strange. Yeah. yeah. Just those two yeah. blocks right next to each other on the edge were damaged. Mm. Bad. You got nailed by a cosmic right. ray. Yeah, that one. Just just, <laughs> just focused on that block. It, it is kind of odd that it's just that the selectively damaged here and there. But yeah, it's hard to say what happened there. But yeah. it does look strange. Like it's that peeled surface. You did, We saw some of it in, in some of the other clips too. I think at Sacsayhuaman and you also see it yeah, around see the Coricancha. The, an outer layer. Like, yeah. yeah, an outer layer that's come off, it's peeled off. You do see a similar thing in Egypt on some of the granite that, that there's like a surface mm. layer that's come off uh, for whatever reason. Um, I think we looked at some of that discolored granite and some of those things at the, at the around the Hafra pyramid last week. So, you know, there's yeah. these threads that kind of weave their way through a lot of these sites. Yeah, yeah. Similarities that you know. Consistencies, notice. yeah. Yeah. So, what about the vitrification? Do you guys think that? Some of those surfaces are vitrified. Has that actually been studied and shown, or is it just like it looks like that? I mean, there's been a number of studies that have been done. There's been a number of, I don't know how in depth they are. Not probably full scientific papers, but there's there's a couple of there's a guy called Helmut Trebuch who did a study because he he believes it's acid that formed it that melted and molded the stone they used acid and he did a, a full study looking at vitrified surfaces and the contact between blocks but then there's a couple of sort of long form articles out there on the internet from people that have looked at maybe heat's being applied to it again mm -hmm. comparing it to the iron age forts um that there was extreme heat applied to the walls as maybe as a finish maybe to sort of make the joints perfect and to give them a sort of a finish over the edge. Mm. Um, but again, in reality, no one really knows. I don't think the work's been done. I don't think yeah. the amount of work's been done. I think you need to compare a lot of sites, a lot of different walls. You need to do geological analysis of the actual blocks, which probably needs to be taken away to a lab, which probably will never happen because it won't right. be allowed. But if you could, you know, all that work to be done, then you'd get a little bit close to the truth. Then you've mm. still got, hundreds more questions right and, and some experimentation to try and do it i know antonio yeah. zamora was was trying to create vitrified surfaces on rocks for a little while i haven't seen where he's gone with that but i know i saw a video where he was like blow torching rocks and trying to figure out you know just experiment to, to see if you can get close that's great to though isn't it i, I, it I is. love all that i love yeah. it i love it Lime, you've got the know-how fractures you can't it's you know limestone you fractures try to do that with limestone and you just yeah. it just starts to shatter and right. you can't mm. As far as I know, you can't really melt the stuff. Yeah, it's you know? it, there's definitely evidence for. I mean, it, the, the, the stones vitrified. It has that shiny surface, uh, and you see it on the older styles, like the the Hunan Pacha and the Uran Pacha. Yeah, you don't typically yeah, see it on the, on the Inca work. And some people say, well, this is evidence of the cosmic ray stuff. But I've also seen it undercover, like I've seen it in areas where there's a roof over it. So Kenko, for example. There's areas like that that wouldn't have been exposed to the sky, but you still have vitrified stone in there. Uh, so, I, yeah, I don't, there's I don't, a process I don't know. in there. Yeah, it seems like a process. I mean, there's but, a process that we don't know, but it's something to do with heat of some sort that probably. created a vitrified surface. I, Layer. Uh, yeah, how, why, acid, <laughs> heat, temperature. Right. Take your pick. Yeah. <laughs> and the yep. other, another link that, it, that exists between. Peruvian ruins and, and Egyptian ones are the keystone cuts, right? They're, yep. they're found in both places. Keystone, uh, yep. Yeah. 
And have they found, I mean, are there, are there actual keystone, whatever the metal was, do they have some of those still? Or are those usually all gone? I imagine most of them have been gone if they are. But but yeah, we saw a couple of examples of things that might have might have operated like that here. I'm not I'm not I'm not certain if there's still examples of them or not. Um, yeah, no, I think I think, I think there have been a few examples found, but I don't I don't know off the top of my head with uh, yeah. you know what they're made of and, and much about them. But I think you can see them in a lot of different cultures across the world. There's similar cuts, and some people yeah. say there's stone that was put in there, others metal, and there's a few examples. Right. I think yeah. And if yeah. it was metal, you'd be pouring it in place, right? Yeah, of course, to join the blocks together to keep them, right. again, even more solid. Right. Well, there's de- there's definitely, if that's what you're talking about, like key locking, like the, yeah. is that what yeah. you mean? Definitely that there is, I mean, Tiwanaku for sure. Yeah. Um, I think you see some examples of it again inside the Korokansha, which we'll get to. We'll just tease that episode. Well, maybe we'll do that next week or next time. Uh, yeah. We'll get into to, to take a closer look at that stuff too. Definitely some of those. And the, and the other, there's another similarity, of course, between Egypt and, and here in the stonework is that you have those examples of where stones are kind of go around the corner. You, you don't have that right. linear fault line. You see it at Saxe Huaman. You definitely see it at the Korokansha. Very similar to like the Valley Temple uh, at Giza. Yeah, I think it's a great um, example there, isn't there? Yeah, just the, it, it wraps those corners. And I guess the, the theory is, is that the stone was carved, like it's put in place and then it's, it's the corners kind of cut out of it. Um, but yeah, that's Again, harder it's, to do. <laughs> it is very much harder to do. And just how to go block that way, yeah. right? Have it, you're right, and 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 but the effect being that you don't have those continuous fault lines, which makes it much more earthquake or so, earthquake proof or just vibration proof. You know, it's it's yeah. it locks itself into its structure, and not something we typically do a lot of today. And it uh, looks better. It looks great. It, it, it looks, looks quality. Yeah. And you we're just, impressed. Just cur- carving <laughs> inside corners. Still impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, man, this has been fascinating. Again, Ben, yeah. thank you very much. No. And uh, yeah, Matt, your your knowledge and information on all of this stuff has been great too. So thank yeah. you. I'm always always trying to learn. <laughs> it's never it's never over, is it? The learning. No, right. sir. No. Right it's- at all. Was good, man. The yeah. more we learn, the more we realize we don't know anything. That's, that's right. That's what yeah. It feels yeah. Like. yeah, that's what we've concluded. We knew yes. nothing, nothing at the start. We know nothing now. Yeah, <laughs> we, know, we know even more about the nothing we know. That's right. <laughs> yes, we've, we're starting to realize the gaps of like the the, the extent of the things we don't know. <laughs> like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of how you can give yourself a clue. It's not quite done in, you know. It's like yeah, once yeah. you start realizing <laughs> that you just you just further away from the answer than you thought you were and like okay that must mean yeah. we're getting somewhere i don't know but yeah yeah it's it's a it's a frustrating aspect to all of this i know a lot of people are like oh we ever going to figure it out i'm like i'm not sure i don't know but it's yeah. Yeah. it's a lot of fun looking and um yeah and and i certainly yeah, yeah I, I i i'm always calling for let's do more let's apply more science let's try and figure it out with an open mind like that seems to always be the key like just we need to be open to some of these alternative methods and you, mm. as you said, test them in the marketplace of ideas and throw them out, keep them in. That's the whole process. Yeah. Why you argue, right? You, you take the good from the bad and and yeah. you evolve your ideas over time. Yeah. If you're a theory, you got to try and disprove it. You That's know. right. Yes. You got to look at it hard. Well, yeah. I think these walls are made this way. Okay. Now you got loads of evidence for it. Now disprove it. And if you right. can't disprove it, well, you might have solved it. Yep. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> And yeah. yeah, it is frustrating to to think about, you know, how long we could study this stuff and how we may never know the answers. But at the same time, I'm so glad that mm. there are puzzles like this. Yeah. Because how boring would the world be if we Damn didn't right. have yeah. things like this to, to wonder about, mysteries like this to ponder. Yeah, so. I agree. I love mystery and I hate mystery at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I I agree. I think the, I think the mysteries. Are, it's also I, th- I think it's a it's an attractive element to these sites. You know, it's it's like man, if if the auth- if the establishment could maybe em- even embrace more of that, that it would might yeah. help them to yeah. get more tourism, which is great. More dollars to protect and preserve these things and to fund work that more. needs to go on there. You know, it's it's like, yeah. Yeah, you know, let's. I think more people would be interested. I mean, not that people aren't interested in these sites. I mean, they're very very popular tourist destinations as it is but um yeah i highlighted think... the, the the most incredible aspects of it to the wider world it would increase tourism and that's what I these, think so. oh especially now is what countries need isn't it egypt they especially do. yeah you know peru they could do with 
lots of people coming in. Yep. Yeah, but academia doesn't get grants to discover mysteries. That's right. They get grants to yeah. come up with answers. Yeah. True. This is true. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Too bad. It is. <laughs> doing it wrong <laughs> yeah no well, well hopefully they do a little more here uh, at, at these places it, it, the, the pace does yeah. seem to be pretty slow in terms of the real scientific work happening happening here it's i know and i know it's tightly controlled by the authorities here as well in terms of what you can do what you can't do and and whether or not it sort of gets in the way of the um i guess the the, the established narrative and there's a lot of uh, cultural aspects mixed up down here as well. Like there's a lot of pride, I'd, I'd say, in in the idea that this is the Inca because you you obviously the people here are the de descendants of the Inca, and it's yeah. you know it's there's some people get offended when you say the Inca don't do it, and and I've had that direct I've had that experience in fact pretty directly. Uh, it's with the usual sort of straw man argument. Well, if you didn't think the Inca did it, then you must think the aliens didn't you must think the inca were just useless and hopeless i'm like no that's not at all no, yeah. what yeah. we're saying and, and in fact you you know just the inca did incredible work and they terraformed the sacred valley they terraced it they had an amazing civilization but their How capabilities big was that empire? yeah Huge. big <laughs> empire amazing and it was a tragedy what happened to them and and it, you know but they just they still i don't think had the capability to do some of the stuff that we're seeing um so it, it sort of keeps that question open. It's, it, it certainly doesn't mean that, oh, it was aliens or, or something else. But I think there is a more complicated answer to it than just, well, the Inca did it. It's the same yeah. answer you get in Egypt. Well, the Egyptians just did it. They just It's just national project, bro. They just applied themselves and, you know, right. you, you can't, you can't that, get around the technology. So. Also, the fact that the Inca revered and preserved what they found there uh, right. says a lot about who they were. You That's know? right. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's important. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with you. There's nothing it's it's not an insult to say that it, that it doesn't seem like they built that other stuff like the megalithic stuff. It's um it's just looking at data and and yep. trying to figure out what you know what's going on there. Indeed. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thanks guys. This was fun. Yeah. yeah. Again. Thank all yeah. of you. Yeah. It was another fantastic episode. Looking forward to more. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. We got I got a lot more sites, uh, as you said. I got a lot more sites that we haven't seen. Lots more video footage. We'll get Brilliant. there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. All right, guys. Good night. Thanks yep. so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, Matt. Chat more. Cheers. Bye.